Good afternoon. In accordance with sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of City of Toronto is called to order. My name is Larry Clay and I'll be chairing today's session. Panel members today are Carol Martin, Jordan Allison, and Mady Murray, Mar Mar I'm sorry, I did it every time. Marjorie. Uh, and our Deputy Secretary Treasurer today is Simon Lamb. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit of the, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Committee of Adjustment public hearings are now conducted in a hybrid in-person and virtual format. Some applicants and participants will make their submissions in person and others will participate virtually by electronic means through WebEx. The meetings are also streamed on the City of Toronto Planning YouTube channel and anyone wishing to view the hearing may watch on YouTube. Those who want to participate virtually and have registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smartphone or telephone and have the option of participating via video or audio only. All per virtual participants will automatically be muted upon entry. When your item is called, you will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called upon to speak. Those participating by video appearance will be temporarily upgraded to panelists when your item is being held. During this time, your camera will be enabled. You will only be visible during your five minute allotted speaking time. At all other times, your video will be disabled and you will be reinstated as an attendee. For both in-person and virtual participants, Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with the written submission deadline. Those participating through WebEx are not allowed to use share screen or any other panelist controls during a video appearance. People attending in person today who want to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must fill out a decision request card and those participating virtually need to submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because the Committee of Adjustment and the Toronto Local Appeal Body will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, you may be able to appeal the decision to the Toronto Local Appeal Body or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. However, the provincial government amended the Planning Act and generally removed rights of third parties to appeal Committee of Adjustment decisions. Only the applicant, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, specified persons and public bodies are permitted to appeal decisions of the Committee of Adjustment. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. Today, I will call each item in the order it's listed on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with their presentation if desired. When the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when you are reaching the five minute mark. Any presentation or other materials you wish to submit to the committee must have been emailed in advance of the hearing. Staff and committee members cannot accept materials at the hearing. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name and address. Please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and make a presentation to the committee on the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer an application if substantially revised to ensure the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application are informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or oppose the application will be invited to speak. Generally, we call first on speakers in the hearing room and then those participating through WebEx. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they have finished their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This will mark the end of the discussion. The application will be taken into committee for a decision. Um, are there any declarations of interest of staff or panel members? Mr. May? Chair, I have a conflict with application number 28. Great, thank Cranbrook, you. 504 Cranbrook Avenue. And the reason for the 
Uh, Conflict? The owner is my friend. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Deputy uh, Secretary Treasurer, we do have a deferral request. Through you, Mr. Chair, we have one deferral request this afternoon. It's item number 19, 79 Parkview. Is that agent with us now? Were there any one registered to speak? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is Mehdi Hosseini. I'm the designer and the agent on behalf of the owner. Um, we did have someone registered to speak. Are they on the line as well? They are. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. Um, just give me a moment. I'm just going to read your application into the record. This is number 1979 Parkview. This is an application to, excuse me, to construct a one-story garden suite with a basement. Panel members have before them a copy of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, three photos of subject property, community planning staff report dated February 27th, refusing the, recommending refusal of the application, a uh, memo from Urban Forestry, an advisory memo from Urban Forestry dated February 22nd, Transportation Services staff report dated February 29th, and a uh, notice of a pre previous Committee of Adjustment decision from December 2019th. Uh, there are letters of opposition from the Willowda Willowdale Central Ratepayers Association from 52 Parkview and a letter from the councillor. Okay, sir. So you are seeking a deferral? Yes. And the reason yes, for Mr. it? Mr. Chair. The reason for the deferral? Uh, so we, uh, we had a discussion with, uh, with my client and we gone through the, the letter from the councillor's office and also planning um, a report that we received. Uh, we think it's best we defer this application to have time to uh, address those comments and talk to the neighbors as well. And then we can come back to the committee with a better proposal. Great, thank you very much. Do we have the resident uh, online? Maybe we can invite her. Um, hello, Ms. Medema. Yes, Sue Ann Medema, 52 Parkview Avenue. Thank you very much. Um, the applicant has requested a deferral. Are you in favor of a deferral? Yes, I welcome that. Great, thank you very much. Okay, panel members, we're in committee. Uh, anyone have a motion? Many? Yes, uh, I can make a motion to defer this application uh, so the applicant have an opportunity to discuss um, the application with the neighbors. And the city. And the city. The city Great, staff. thank you. Seconder? Carol? Yeah. Okay, all those in favor? Okay, you have your deferral, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay, we return to item number 15. Uh, 84 points Ave. This is an application to obtain consent to sever the property into two undersized residential lots and to construct two new dwellings. Uh, this was previously deferred at committee from January the 18th. Committee has before it a copy of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, a draft R plan, uh, the um, recommendation matrix from Urban Forestry, a uh, memorandum from Engineering Construction Services dated July 31st, 2023, um, uh, Heritage Planning Arch Archaeological Staff Report dated January the 11th, 2024, email from Community Planet dated July 17th, 2023, Previous Committee of Adjustment Approval from 1990, five subjects of the uh, five photos of the subject property and an harvest report from Redbud Forestry. Do we have the agent with us? Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the Committee of Adjustment. My name is Christina Bakarov, and I'm the owner of 84 Points Avenue in North York. I'm respectfully requesting minor variances to the property, as well as a consent to sever. 
The reason for the severance is so that I have a home and my sister and her family have the other home and for our families to continue to grow together. Looking at a map, 84 Points is located two blocks from Young Street and two blocks from Shepherd Avenue. Young and Shepherd, as you know, is a busy intersection with commercial buildings and high-rise condominiums. As you venture further away from the intersection, you find large single-family homes. I would propose that 84 Points is in a transitional area between these large buildings and large single-family homes where the proposed application for two smaller homes is reasonable and appropriate. For further context, 84 Points sits on lots 794 and 795. The original plan of subdivision shows two lots here. I understand there's a deeming bylaw in place, and that is the reason for the application before you today. I raise this simply to note that the two lots that two lots were originally envisioned here. With respect to planning considerations and the application before you, engineering, city planning, and transportation have all reviewed and have no concerns with the consent to sever and the minor variances. With respect to these minor variances, we feel that they are suitable for two smaller homes and that none of the variances create a new precedent for the neighborhood. For example, as it currently sits, 84 points is less than 0.6 meters to the property line or 1.2 meters from its next door neighbor, 88 points. And this is the case with a number of properties in the area, including those on the same street, such as 51 and 55 points and 121 and 123 points, which are only 0.3 meters to the property line. Uh, this is again a transitional neighborhood and these minor variances are common. And as mentioned, these minor variances were discussed with city planning, which agreed that they are minor in nature and do not create a precedent and hence their response that they have no concerns. I propose that the four part test for a minor variance is met in this case. In terms of forestry, uh, there are nine trees on the property in total, which I submit is a number of trees for uh, a lot in Toronto. Three of these trees are in the front yard next to the driveway and considered public trees. We have updated our plans as attached to move the location of the driveway and keep all three trees in the front yard. We are also keeping all six in the backyard and preserving the nine trees total on, a, on the property. Finally, in reaching out to neighbors, it is my understanding that the neighbors are all supportive of severance. There are letters that support severance, but not the addition of a secondary suite within each house. We note that Shepherd and Young is a high density neighborhood. Nevertheless, to satisfy our neighbors and keep good relations, we have removed the secondary suites from the plans. These are now single family homes only with no rental units. In conclusion, we propose that the application meets the test for minor variance and the request for consent to sever supports the strong public policy initiative of increasing housing in Toronto and is in line with Ontario's goal of building 1.5 million new homes by 2031. We respectfully ask you to grant this application for minor variance and consent. Thank you. Thank you very much. So just to be clear, you were deferred in January. The changes that you've made are in respect of your now preserving the trees and you weren't before and you, you previously had a proposal that included a secondary suite and you no longer have a secondary suite. Are those the major changes you've made? That's correct, yes. No other changes? No other changes. Okay, great, thank you. Panel, any questions? Jordan? Are there any changes with respect to the variances uh, that uh, are in relation to the removal of the secondary suite, or is that something that is completely separate from the application? Yes, completely separate from the application. Uh, there was, I believe, a hookup for an oven in the secondary suites to allow for a kitchen, and those have been removed. Um, they're single-family homes, and none of the variances have changed from the time that city planning, engineering, and transportation have reviewed. Okay, thanks. I also have a question. Hey. Um, so there is a uh, urban forestry um, memo from February 29th that is still recommending deferral of this application. Did you have a chance to go through that and uh, discuss that with the uh, that department? 
no. It's yes. Now, it's now just condition number one. Okay. It's an update. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes, I saw. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I don't have yep. any questions. Anyone else? No comments. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. We will uh, take this into committee. You guys, thoughts, comments. Jordan. I didn't have any concerns with this application. I, I was actually part of the initial deferral. I'm really glad to see that the applicant has revised to maintain those city trees. I think that was the initial concern. And uh, actually, it's actually one of two consent applications today that involve trees. So I'm really glad to see that we've uh, been able to maintain them. Um, I, you know, my ears perked up a little bit when I heard about the removal of a secondary suite. And frankly, I, I don't, I think if the applicant, I don't want to limit any uh, potential approval to, you know, limit the ability to include a secondary suite because I think, you know, if we're looking at, uh, you know, official plan policies and sort of the direction that the city's heading in, I think we want to ensure that, you know, these secondary suites are possible on these properties. Actually, in, in fact, I, well, I respect that they've been responding to the neighbor's feedback. I, I don't, with respect to the four tests, I don't think it's done anything in that effect, if anything, shouldn't say drive it away from the four test, but I mean, it, it does, I don't want to limit the applicant. So I think if they, if they get approval, should they wish to put those secondary suites in, I, I want to make sure that that is uh, still a possibility for them. And, and they may be able to do that as of right. Right. And yeah. I do note that drawings still refer to a secondary suite in the, um, in the drawing. So I mean, that's a potential thing that they could do in the future. Yeah, I actually think that's quite desirable, particularly with the proximity to public transit. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I no issues or concerns. Glad to see the revisions. Um, I don't know if any of my colleagues have anything to say. I think I agree Ms. with Mr. Allison. I'm uh, in uh, generally supporting this application. Um, I don't have any particular concern. Okay. I'll look to someone for a motion. Jordan? Yeah, sure. I actually just before we get to that, I did note there there was an initial report from Heritage Planning for Archaeology. It was part of the deferred application. I presume that still those recommendations still apply. Um, and I also note urban forestry condition number one, as well as there's some conditions in the community planning. Um, I think that relate specifically to uh, just pull it. If we can just pull yep, up that there report. Are, there are three, Mr. Chair. There are standard. We'll, we'll put it up for you. There are standard consent conditions, and also there is a historical ECS and transportation. That's as right. Well, yeah. if, if approved. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes. And uh, thank you for noting the transportation as well. Um, so if I, I make can all take over a again. Yeah, I'll yeah. take a stab at it. So uh, I'll make a motion to approve the subject application. Uh, with the inclusion of urban forestry condition number one, recommendations noted in the heritage planning report, recommendations noted in the community planning uh, report, as well as the recommendations noted from in the transportation uh, report. Did you get engineering? Did you say engineering? Did we get engineering? We got it. Okay. The story is part of, yeah. So Great. It's Thank covered. you. Motion by Mr. Allison. Do I have a seconder? I second that. Uh, Mehdi? All in favor? You have your approval, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, we move on to item number 16. Um, hang on a second. I'll I, am, I am set up. Oh, are you set up? Uh, it's your call. If you're ready to go. Why don't, yeah, why don't we get you set up properly and then we'll bring you in on number 17. Okay. Number 16, 8 Sandfield Road. It's an application to construct a new three-story detached dwelling. Panel members have before them a copy of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, a revised zoning notice dated February 29th, 
cover letter from the agent, presentation material from the agent, community planning staff report dated February 29th, a uh, memo from Urban Forestry, a tree inventory and assessment report by Whiteside Tree and Gardens, and a tree protection bylaw declaration form. Do we have the agent with us? Okay. Yes, you do. Okay. Uh, my name is Jim. Oh. Uh, yes, if you can just uh, um, your, your name and address, please, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm Jim Pfeffer from 95 St. Clair Avenue West. Okay, uh, so you've put in, uh, you have a revised variance list. Can we just go to the public notice and let's go through and make sure we have the proper changes? Yeah, so I put the changes that I were, was going to be requesting into a letter and they follow pretty closely the recommendation from city planning. And the changes are to variance three, and you'll see this yeah, if you zoom into the top of my letter. Uh, variance three will be um, instead of uh, uh, the proposed lot coverage will be 31.4% of the lot area, and that's 30.11% of the lot area for the proposed house and 1.29% of the lot area for the rear platform with enclosed space below. Kind of misplaced the return there. So that becomes 31.4%, and then that's specified in particular 30.11 for the house and 1.29% for the rear platform with enclosed space below. And then variance number four from the height Instead of 12.92 meters, it becomes 12.5 meters, and that's what staff uh, recommended. Okay, and no further changes? No further changes. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. And maybe if you could give us just a short presentation, that'd be great. Yeah, so if you pull up that booklet of supporting material that I had, uh, you'll see the first page is kind of a rendering of the front of the house. And just in respect to the height variance, you'll see that in this case, that central roof is actually higher than the roofs to the side. So the, the variance we're asking for is really for this sort of central front feature roof, but because it's that central portion which faces the street, this additional height doesn't even continue to the back of the building. So this is not something that's having any shadow impact. It does create a bit more presence on the street, but it's a presence on the street that's completely in keeping with the character of this neighborhood. And then if you go into the, the page just below that, so the staff recommended that we reduce the lot coverage to 30.11%. And we, we did that and we took it back to the zoning examiner. And you can see that area in pink here that is a kind of a landing, and that landing gives way to a series of doors which enter into a kind of a great room in the center of the back of the house. And because there is a basement below that, they considered that landing to be lot coverage. But you can see it's five steps up from that uh, terrace, which is essentially on grade. It's located right in the center of the house. So it really can't be seen from any side. So we think what we've done is really in the spirit of what uh, the staff recommended. So it's a, it's a very, and that's that 1.29%, I think, of additional coverage just for that platform. It's only coverage because it's got a basement below, but it's, it's really a kind of a minor item. And we wanted it the full width because there's doors there. Uh, the side yard, you can see that red dashed line. You can see that's the line of the existing house. You can see on the, the bottom there, the north side, we're kind of matching the existing side yard setback. Uh, we're going a little bit closer to the side yard um, to the south. But if you keep going down, you can see we've got actually pictures of, well, there's the neighborhood. You can see the kind of, and our proposal kind of just um, above that circle. You can see where the part that's drawn in, but you can see the footprint of our house very much in keeping with the generous homes in this area. If you keep going down, you'll see uh, some variances, other variances similar to what we've looked for, for lot coverage and side yard setbacks. And if you keep going, 
you can just see the kind of generous, uh, there's the height, you can see how the center of the building steps up. So it's really that that we're looking for the height variance for. And if you just keep going, I think we've got some photos, both of the side yards where you can see really generous screening to the side yards, and also just the character of this neighborhood, which is in the past and presently just characterized by some really substantial houses with really significant presence on the street. So we're very much in keeping with that existing uh, character. Great, thank you very much, sir. So I think, I think that's kind of... I'm sorry, I interrupted you, pardon me. No, uh, that's it. I'm happy to take uh, any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Panel, any questions? Jordan? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, I just had a question concerning the proposed lot coverage. I believe the applicant submitted some comparable variances. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, there was four uh, precedent uh, approvals that were submitted between 2016 to 2000, actually 2008 to 2018, I should say. Um, I noticed that the highest um, lot coverage out of those approvals is 30.4. I'm hoping the applicant may speak to that, give, give him an opportunity to speak to that a little bit. Just given that there is a discrepancy between what planning suggested and what uh, the applicant is proposing, um, I think it warrants a, maybe a response. Yeah, um, I, I think I've often seen it be the case at the Committee of Adjustments that uh, the committee approves additional lot coverage, which is specifically related to something that has a basement below or that's below grade. And I, I think I've seen this in numerous neighborhoods through the city approved here at this North York Committee, where there's basically a rear terrace which has a ba basement below or something which is essentially on grade and has a basement below. And the committee approves it knowing they're not approving kind of massing of the house, but approving, you know, essentially just kind of a, what, what could be a balcony in terms of its, uh, or, or not even a balcony, a terrace in terms of its impact on the public. So by wording the variance this way, and we've got the zoning notice you'll see reflects this exact language. So wording the variance this way, you know, the committee is essentially shrink wrapping this decision to ensure that we're not asking for this lot coverage and being able to do anything else with it, but we're asking for this lot coverage and it's specifically related just to this platform with, um, you know, enclosed space below. And I, I've, I've very often seen that, you know, in many areas throughout the city. Just to just to confirm, of the the four uh, that you've submitted, the highest uh, certainly within the immediate area currently is thirty point four. Is that correct? Yeah. So the, our house itself, the mass of the house, you know, sort of above the basement is we're asking for for thirty point one one, which is what staff um, had recommended, and we we thought essentially we were there. And when we took it back to the zoning examiner, they said, well, the house, yeah, you're, that's where you are, are at with the house, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count this platform as lot coverage. But that platform, you know, if you take a look at um, the site plan, you'll see it is right between the center of the house. Um, it is five steps up from grade. So it really, you know, it can't be said to be impactful at all. So I think we're in keeping both with those precedents in terms of the impact of those precedents, because I read those decisions and then they didn't have any similar kind of shrink wrapping. And we're also, I think, in keeping with the spirit of what, you know, staff has recommended, because we're asking for this additional bet, shrink wrapping it very tightly and just making sure that, um, yeah, it, it's for something that's not impactful at all. Okay, thanks. Great, thank you. Any further questions? Okay, no more questions. Okay, we'll take it into committee. Any comments, thoughts, observations, motions? Uh, my observation uh, would be, if it's helpful, um, I think the variances here that are being proposed are really quite minor. This is an, uh, an area neighborhood which is characterized by quite large homes on quite large lots. Uh, I don't think the variances being requested would uh, uh, 
not necessarily uh, affect any of the neighbors. There is no opposition. I think this proposal would fit quite nicely into this street and into this neighborhood. So I think it's supportable. Okay. Uh, anyone else or have a motion? Through you, Mr. Chair, I'm happy to bring a motion. Thank you. I would agree with your comments uh, um, for the reasons that you stated. I'm happy to bring a motion for approval. Uh, I will note uh, this is going to be an amended uh, approval. Uh, so uh, we variance number three uh, is being amended from 33.21 to 31.4 percent uh, regarding lot coverage, and variance number. I think it was four uh, building height is being amended from 12.92 to 12.5 meters. Uh, also to include urban forestry number two. Um, and I think, th I know there were some comments from community planning. I just wanna make sure that uh, via the changes, I, we, we will actually know we won't be com community planning because we've covered, we've covered that and we've addressed the difference in lot coverage. So that's my motion. Okay. Motion by Mr. Allison to approve uh, the amended application, uh, including forestry condition number two. Do I have a seconder? Maddie, all in favor? You have your approval, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're have a great afternoon. You're welcome. Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Through you? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we, were, we were temporarily missing the agent for the next one, but I've been informed he is here. Great. So uh, if we, if Before we, wanna... we start this next item, uh, I will just uh, note uh, that uh, and uh, welcome uh, Larry Swartz to the panel, uh, who was originally scheduled to be here all day and was unable to attend in the morning, has now joined us for the afternoon session. My video is not showing. Uh, maybe staff could give Larry a hand here. While we're getting him set up, I'll just uh, introduce item number 17, 3 Lonely Avenue. This is an application to construct a new two-story detached dwelling with an integral garage. Panel members have before them a copy of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, arborist report from Thomas Watson, the arborist, and presentation materials from the agent. We have uh, seven form letters of support from Lumley Avenue, Burnham Road, uh, and Heath Street East. So we do have the agent. Hello? We lose him again? Through, through you, Mr. Chair, we have unmuted Jonathan. Jonathan, are you there? I am. I, I do not believe this is my item. Uh, you're in Lumley Avenue? I'm happy to take a stab if you like, Mr. Clay, but I'm, I'm not very familiar with it. <laughs> I'm sure the owner would, would, would maybe not appreciate you speaking to it then. Um, do we have the agent for Lumley Avenue? Sure. We will move on to item number 18, 27 Tilson Road. And this is an application to construct a two-story rear addition with a rear deck and walkout. Panel has before it a copy of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, tree protection materials, a community planning staff report dated February 29th, a decision matrix from uh, Urban Forestry and a memo from Transportation Services dated February 28th. We do have a letter of opposition from 23 Tilson Road. Do we have the agent with us? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Roman Preet from uh, Marvel Engineering. And your address, sir? Hello? Uh, 48 Newbury Crescent, Brampton. Okay. All right, sir, we have uh, some people who want to speak in interest to this application, so could we have a presentation, please? Thanks. 
Um, good afternoon, uh, committee members. Uh, this application is in regards to an addition to 27 Tilson Road. Uh, it's a two-story house. The proposal is to uh, increase the height of the existing house and uh, a rear addition uh, and propose a garage in the basement. The variances which we are requesting today, they mostly pertain to a front yard driveway, vehicle entrance from the front main wall, landscaping, softscaping, roof eaves, side yard setback, uh, plat platforms including the porch balcony. Uh, so essentially the, the addition is in line with the, the existing house. The rear addition is going to be the, the side yard, which is proposed at 0 0.3 meters, the addition is proposed at the same side yard. So we are not, uh, and we are encroaching as per the bylaw, but it's one straight line. Roof, eaves, and the variance pertaining to that is essentially we are just raising up and putting the same size roof eaves all over the house, which uh, was on the previous house. Uh, we have a garage opening from the front main wall. There's a precedence for that already uh, from other two addresses, 26 and 28 Hardwood, which is very close to this house. Uh, the front yard driveway, we have discussed with the planning. Uh, the planning report also includes uh, the drawing revisions, which were done. A week to 10 days ago, we have reduced the width of the driveway to uh, make space for more uh, landscaping and stockscaping. Uh, the site plan could be uh, look, uh, uploaded uh, on the application information portal. For the tree protection plan, it has been already prepared. It has been uploaded to the portal too. And we are fine with the forestry uh, condition. The transportation for the transportation, we are okay with the condition. Adding, building on to that, uh, the driveway width, they want uh, the curb cut width. They want uh, they want it to be less than six meters. We are at 5.54 meters, so we can comply with that. The other condition, they want a two percent pep positive slope, so the water flows away from the house towards the road. We have already complied with that, but we would be happy to show them more information if they need anything for that sort from us. We have uh, two letters of support from 29 and 30 Tilson. Uh, 30 Tilson is a house which has which went through Committee of Adjustment in 2019 uh, with more variances than we are requesting and worse variances than we are requesting. It was uh, approved by the committee, so the presidents for the amount of variances we are requesting is there. We have one letter of opposition from, uh, uh, I think, 23 Telson. Uh, I can uh, explain a little bit on to that. Uh, the letter says that we are proposing a carport, which we are not. The proposed house, proposed house is going to have an integral uh, uh, garage in the basement. Uh, the, the additional and the owner has an issue with the flow of traffic through the shared driveway. Uh, in this application, we are proposing uh, an extended driveway, which uh, the new owner will be using for his own use. And uh, uh, the shared driveway will be kept uh, open, unobstructed at all times. So there won't be an issue there. Regarding the tree, I already spoke to it. Uh, the existing tree will remain uninjured, and the tree protection plan will be submitted to the city. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Great. Thank you very much. Panel, any questions? I have a question, Maddie? Mr. Chair. Um, uh, the staff report, uh, the community planning uh, report is recommending to change variance number two to have more landscape and also soft landscaping. Can you speak to that, please? Uh, yes, yeah, so um, automatically, uh, sorry, uh, planning uh, got in contact with us. They wanted us to shrink the driveway 
and uh, give more space for uh, the landscaping and the softscaping. So if you see the original plans which were submitted to the Committee of Adjustment, it had wider driveway. But upon uh, the conversation with the planning, we live for like two, three days, we ended up with the squeezed driveway. Uh, if you see the last page of the planning report, you can see that the driveway has been squeezed, eight feet, eight inches, and then it widens very close to the garage. So they supported that, and it is uh, clearly mentioned in the, the letter from the planning also that the attached... Uh, uh, document has more landscaping and hardscaping, and we the variance uh, the variance has actually gone down from what we were asking for, and we are okay with that. So the the, the change, so. community planning has requested uh, a change in the soft landscaping, and the applicant has agreed to that. Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, I think he did when he went through it, but we can certainly do that again. Yeah. Through you, Mr. Chair, if there are changes to the application, if the applicant can read them into the records for us, please. Thank you very much. If you could identify from the public notice uh, which variants you're actually changing, please. I think it's two and three. No problem. Uh, so the variances which we will be changing is number two. So the front yard uh, landscaping is 30.39%. Um, let, let me go to the report. And then, nope, not here. Okay, so, so that number is going to be 38.22%, and the front yard soft uh, landscaping area has increased from 29.01% to 35%. So this, these are the, uh, it's variance number two, but it has two parts to it, and both of them have uh, came down. Okay, so you're changing variance number two and number three. Correct? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Any, you good with that? Any further questions? Yeah, um, no, um, one quick. So we are changing variance 2B and 2D. So 2 has two parts to it. We are changing both of them. Um, I, I'm, I, what we have in front of us, there's no... 2A and 2B on the public notice. Through you, Mr. Chair, I suspect he's reading off the zoning review. Yeah, so I think... If he could reference the public notice that's up on the screen right now. Yeah, if, if, you could, if you could speak specifically to what you see on the screen, that is the public notice. So rather than the amended zoning report. So number two is with respect to front yard landscaping. Number three is the soft landscaping component of that. If you could just... Yes. Tell us what yes. those changes are. Yeah, yeah, that, yes, that's the one. Yeah, the two and the three. Actually, I was looking at the different zoning numbers. Right. But yes, that's number two and number three. So could you, for the record, could you please just confirm uh, what you're uh, changing those two variances to? Okay, no problem. So we are changing... Uh, number two from 30.39% to 38.22%, and we are changing number three from 29.01% uh, to 35%. 35 35.0. Okay. Yes, 35.0. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much, Jordan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just if we could pull up the site plan. No so with respect to variance number two and three, uh, you're confident that, that those uh -huh. numbers will work. I just, because if I look at the site plan, I have to uh, quit. Sorry, let me, let me just finish and then I'll, I'll let you respond. Um, if I look at the site plan, I have to ask you, sir, how does, how does somebody get from 
the new porch and steps that are proposed to either the driveway or the street? Is the intention to have the porch and the stairs terminate at soft landscaping? So it's an amended site plan. Yes, that's the only way we can get these numbers. But the, but the stairs are coming right down into the grass. So are we, is, I mean, we're dealing with some pretty significant variances here. There's not much soft landscaping yet. And I'm trying to make sure that what's being proposed is in, in reality is actually feasible. I, I, we've had this before where we see a porch or a front entry way that just doesn't, and I think another member asked of another application, how do you get from point A to point B, right? I was less concerned with that case because we weren't dealing with any soft yard landscaping variances. So yeah, that's something that can be designed after the fact, but dealing, but given that we're dealing with, with the variances right now and the limitations that we're dealing with, it, I, I would question how you get from that stair to the street or the driveway without taking away any more soft landscaping. Um. So the, the way it is proposed right now is uh, that either you walk on the grass or you, uh, you this is the only way we can achieve. Otherwise, we cannot, because uh, the front yard is already very small. There is a huge boulevard in the front, which will be all grass. But since these houses are uh, very old, the front yards were non-existent. And uh, the present uh, era, when we have garages, they, they did not have that at that time. So the proposal, yes, it is taking away the grass area from the front, but uh, uh, the distance from the property line to the house is equal to uh, almost same to the distance from the sidewalk to the property line, which is all grass. So the numbers, they might seem small, but from the front steps, you're six, seven feet away from the property line. So the way it is proposed, we are going to keep it as grass because this is the only way we can have it. There's no other way. You, you couldn't, I, I don't want to get into design here, but I, I see some obvious solutions here, he's frankly. Gonna he's going to have to clear the, that variance, right? So it's like I, it is risk. I, 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 you know, I'm willing to give benefit of the doubt, but I, in these instances, not for a second do I believe that a, a porch can terminate on grass and there's not going to be a walkway there at some point. It just doesn't work. I mean, that this is the stuff that has to get worked out now, right? Not after the fact. Through you, through you, Mr. Chair, unless you tie it to plans, the text of the variance is sufficient. The applicant is has to clear that condition, right? That's correct, Mr. Chair. Regardless of whether what plan he shows. Okay, and the applicant has indicated uh, that they're comfortable with the thirty-five percent. So, okay, answers my question. <laughs> uh, Larry, I'm sorry, Jordan, were you finished? No, I'm done. Okay, Larry. So I have a question. It's on the uh, first variance. Um, you're going from what 1.5 meters to 1.97 meters is that correct so you're uh, maybe maybe you could talk a little bit about the first variance and, that, and how far out that porch is coming okay so uh, the front porch there was an existing porch right where the driveway is uh, if you're standing on, on the, in front of the house, it was towards the right. We basically moved the porch from the right-hand side to the left-hand side of the house. It's the same size, but since it is a new porch, it is creating this variance. So essentially, you can only encroach 1.5 meters into the front yard setback with your porch. So we are encroaching 1.97 meters. So we are 0 0.47 meters extra towards the front yard. So you can encode 1.5, we are at 1.97. Well, why do you have to do that? Can't, couldn't you have done it on a shorter, you got, you're just creating a larger porch. So yeah. I'm, I'm, Larry, I'm trying to interrupt you because we're doing a lot of detail. We still have a speaker uh, registered to oh, okay. uh, share their thoughts with us. So I wonder if we could 
Well, I got we could stand this down and have, hear from uh, Mr. Gavin. Well, I've got another question for him too. Okay, can we hold that until after the speaker speaks? Mr. Gavin. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon. If you could give us your full name and address, please. Okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, 226 Bell Size Drive. So uh, our property just touches on the on the pro property in question. We're right next to the house that is directly behind um, this house here. And the uh, the variance that particularly concerns us is variance number eight which is about the rear second floor balcony. When I look from the back of our house, the rooms which we use most, our, our kitchen, our den, our main, beth, our main bedroom, um, we can't see any second floor balconies on other houses. So, um, so and, and they can't, see, obviously, there's no balcony from which anyone can see us, therefore. So um, this house will be the, the, the proposed plan uh, Puts, makes creates quite a bit greater depth for this house. And so, um, and it's a balcony that's larger, uh, considerably larger than what is permitted by the, the current bylaw. So we think uh, the new proposed uh, balcony will considerably compromise uh, our privacy, it will make a big difference, um, especially since um, there is really not, nothing in the back of that house. The, the, the shrubbery and so forth was taken down at some point, so the, the line of sight is, is direct. So that's our concern, and we would certainly appreciate a consideration whether variance number eight should go, for, go forward. It's something that um, we think um, should be modified. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, any questions of the speaker? Thank you very much, sir. Okay, we'll bring the agent back to address that response. Mr. Mr. Chair, there is one more oh, online. I beg your pardon. So sorry, we have another speaker online. Nicholas? Nicholas, are you there? Size Drive. Um, that is the property, uh, property directly behind uh, 27 Tilson. Um, and I'm here, uh, like uh, Mr. Upton, to uh, object to variance number eight, which is the size of the rear balcony. Um, the, our concern is the same as um, Gavin's, which was about privacy. The balcony is 4.6 meters above grade, and individuals uh, on the balcony are going to be able to look directly into our backyard and family room. Um, and that's very different from a rear deck uh, because of the elevation. Um, and so, you know, in our, our, my view, I, I guess rear balconies are not intended to be living areas. Um, and the, the restriction on their maximum area was clearly intended to uh, make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, while the requested variance appears small, practically it's gonna have the ability uh, make uh, that the uh, balcony large enough that they'll be able to put, uh, you know, lounge recliners and other furniture up there and effectively make that into another deck. Um, so um, we think that um, that is um, something that uh, variance shouldn't be granted. Um, the other concern I, I have, and it's it's not a variance related one, so you may not want to hear about it, but it's about water drainage um, because the grade of 27 Tilson is slightly above my property. Um, and so obviously with the size of this addition, the ability of that property to absorb water is going to be you know, adversely impacted, which is gonna result in more runoff. And I guess my question for the committee is whether you have the ability to order, you know, some type of remediation if there turns out to be an issue? Uh, well, that's not necessarily under our jurisdiction. Use typically what happens with drainage issues is they have to be satisfied through the building permit process. It is something that is addressed through that process. In order to get a building permit, they're going to have to satisfy that uh, the drainage okay. aspect for the property uh, is, is satisfactory and is 
basically self-contained on the property. Okay. Okay. And I, I'm assuming that I could go to the building department and just get notice of when the, an application is made. Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, um, any questions? So, yeah. This? Yeah, just, thank you. Any questions of the speaker? I, I just wanted to have a question. I'm just looking from the street. Um, are there trees between this property and your property in the rear? So, uh, um, th th yes. Um, so there are a property, a, a, a tree, a very large tree. So at the back, um, yeah. So on the right hand side, um, so on the uh, western side, we have a very large pine tree, but it's right on that corner on that west property line. We have a very small uh, tree um, in the middle of the the property. Um, but it will be, I, I'm guessing it's about six feet tall and it's, um, it's a very slow growing, uh, tree. I can't even remember what it is. So if you go back to, if you look at the rear elevation of the property, the balcony is located on the east property line. And, and so practically there are no tree lines that are going to restrict that angle, that view into the, uh, the, the backyard in our family room. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I'll have the agent back, please. Yes, I'm here. Hello, sir. I wonder if you could uh, address the concerns of the two residents we just heard. Yes, so um, as far as I can see, uh, the first resident had concern about the depth of the property and uh, the balcony on the second floor. So we are not asking for any variance uh, which is concerning the depth of the property. We are within the rights and the bylaws to construct this house. The second floor balcony, uh, so essentially the whole balcony is uh, three feet wide. And it uh, runs all the way, uh, all the length at, at the back of the house. So the uh, the proposal, uh, the bylaw allows us to do a four square meter balcony uh, without committee of adjustment. But we went all the way from one side of the house to other side of the house with three feet depth. That is leading to this variance. Uh, if if it, it is a big deterrent to the committee, we can uh, reduce the size of the balcony and take out this variance. But but there are trees at the back. Uh, there's a big tree in the back of the house. Uh, I don't see it being a huge problem. And the balcony can stay uh, a little smaller one uh, with, without the variance. So, I don't see a balcony could be a huge problem for the neighbor, but if it is, we can reduce the size of the balcony. So it is at the back, we cannot even put, put a privacy screen. If it is on the side, we understand we can put a privacy screen. And the, the, the lot is deep, and there is a lot of uh, distance between the two lots, two uh, buildings as well. Uh, okay, sir, yeah, so... That's, that's uh, all I can say on this matter. Um, I heard you say a bunch of things. So you need to tell us what you're, what you would like to do. Did you? I heard you say you could reduce the size of the balcony. Is that what you'd like to do, or are you leaving it as it is? Yes. Um, for the neighbors, we can reduce the size of the balcony, which will uh, kick off that uh, one point in the zoning notice. Yeah. So we can uh, keep it under four square meters. Okay. So you would then be eliminating variance number. Uh, which variance is it, guys? Is it number eight? You uh, you would like to. Uh, remove variance number eight. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Just, uh, I know Larry had some questions I don't think he was finished with, so I want to turn it back to you. Yeah. So I, I've got, I guess, 
Uh, the first question, I may have two. First question, I know there was a letter of objection by a neighbor who objected to a permanent carport structure on the front lawn. I don't think that neighbor is here. Is there a permanent carport structure on the front lawn? I didn't see it. So I guess that's a question to the applicant. Is there a permanent mm. carport structure on the front lawn here? And have you dealt with this neighbor or are you, is there? No, there is no permanent. Okay. We, we did uh, deal with this neighbor. Okay, so there is no it. permanent structure. I think there was a misunderstanding. We, uh, uh, after, after his uh, letter of objection, we tried to uh, speak to the neighbor as well, explaining the okay, proposal, uh, showing okay. him, uh, showing the I got person that uh, Good. I still have another question mm -hmm. for you, because you said that on the street there were others that applied and had more variances than you have. But I looked at the street, and I don't see, mm -hmm. and, I, and there's a bunch of new homes on the street, and there's a bunch of old homes, mostly old homes, but there's a few new ones. But I don't see anybody with a garage the way you have proposed. Are there any with garages that you, like you proposed? Integral garage, I mean. Integral garages. So, uh, so integral garage is uh, right. Uh, so the the Tilson Street meets into. Uh, give me one second. Uh, uh, hardwood, uh, twenty six and twenty eight Hardwood Street. Both of the both houses are right next to each other, okay. and they have garages right next to uh, in the front yard. Yeah. Okay, but I'm looking at I'm looking at Tilson Road, and Tilson Road is uniform in the way it looks to me when I look at the street. And you're adding an integrated garage to the house. I don't see any elsewhere on Tilson Road, and I see others like across the street that are new homes. I'll tell you what I'm getting at here. I'm a little concerned about the landscaping and the way this is going right. to work, particularly as being raised by my other uh, colleague about the, uh, the way that you are going to get from your porch to your driveway and the amount of coverage that's going to be in terms of soft landscaping. This looks different to me. Is there anything you can do about that? Because I'm not happy about it. Um, so uh, I can uh, I can explain to this um, the front yard landscaping. Uh, I mean there are there are ways to make the permeable uh, driveway where the water can go into if, if draining is the problem. If uh, if if the amount of grass is the problem, we have already reduced it. Uh, to eight feet eight. Um, the porch we can. Uh, the porch. I think one of the committee members uh, spoke about the the depth of the porch as well, uh, which we have 1.5 instead of uh, 1.97 instead of uh, 1.5. Uh, the the encroachment in the front. We can make the porch a little smaller. That could uh, Increase the grass area, the the soft scaping area by a little bit, but the front yard is already too small to deal with. So, if we have a driveway or a parking pad, it is going to take out a lot of landscaping from that because it is only 5.54 meters. A standard parking space is six meters. So. Anything, if if you want to park a vehicle in the front, it's going to take out space. And even if you see the house in the front, which is newer, it, had, it, it has a parking pad in the front of the house. So there are some legal, some illegal. The, the landscaping in the front yard is already less in, in some houses on that street. Our proposal, uh, yes, it, it it is less, but we have improved a little. But if if that that is a deterrent, we can make the porch even smaller. The, the porch right now, uh, 
The porch is six feet five. We can take it to four feet. That will leave two feet five inches to the front yard, and that can uh, take out that variances as well. So, let me interject here. So, if you're planning to reduce the size of your front porch, then you have to give us new calculations for what the mm -hmm. soft landscaping would be. Can you do that now? Yes. You can. Do you want to take a minute? Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. If you give me a little time, we can do the calculations quickly for you. Simon, should we stand this down and come back to it, or do you want to give them some time? If you can do it in the next 30 seconds, that would be great, because we've heard so much evidence already. Sir, do you need a little bit more time? I, my, I would... Oh, uh, I can... You can do that now? So, uh, sorry. Uh, so the... I can give you the square feet right now. Do you need the square feet or X more square feet or do you need the percentage? We need square meters and we need the percentage. So what I'm going to suggest is okay. we're going to stand you down for a few minutes. We'll go on to the next item and then we'll come okay. back to you. Okay. Apologies to those in attendance. Yes, yeah, we can do that. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Chair, why don't we go back to 17? I believe we have the okay. agent, the correct agent now. <laughs> okay. All right, we go back to 17 Lumley. Uh, I've read it into the record already. Do we have the agent with us? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Manius, I'm the agent, number one, Teakwood Grove, Toronto. Okay. Um, Panel, this is a fairly minor application. Does anyone need a presentation on this one? Okay, sir. Uh, we've read all the material you've submitted. We're comfortable with your application. We don't need a presentation. Is there anything you'd like to tell the pay, uh, committee before we go into committee? Uh, no, just that it's in keeping with other applications which have been approved in the past, and this is a very deep lot, which is uh, atypical in this neighborhood. Actually, the rear yard setback is equal in depth or very similar in depth to houses on Burnham. Um, so that's the reason why we have the length variance, and uh, although the house is deeper, uh, we are at 55% FSI instead of the 60%, and the coverage is below 30% instead of the allowable 35%. So. I would like to think that uh, the house fits well within this oversized property. I'm happy to answer the questions. Great, thank you very much. Panel, any questions? Okay, we'll go take it into committee. Comments, suggestions, thoughts, motion? Ready? I'm ready to make a motion, Mr. Chair. I think okay. it's a pretty straightforward application. Uh, variances are quite minor, the three variances. I think it's meeting the four tests of the Planning Act, so I'd like to make a motion to approve. I don't see any. Uh, report on the file, so with no condition. Okay. Motion to approve. Do I have a seconder? Oh, Carol? Seconded by Carol Martin. Uh, all in favor? You have your approval, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can we go back to 18 and see how the calculations are going? Uh, hi. Um, so we have uh, one variance, which uh, we calculated. We can tell you because the last the committee went really quickly. Do you need? Yeah. Do we need? Do you need a few more minutes? Yes, please. Okay. We'll stand you down. We'll be back to you in a moment.
Let's move on to number 19. Oh, that was 19, pardon me. Uh, number nine, Mr. Chair, number 19 was deferred. That's deferred, thank so you. So we're moving on to number 20. 20. And I believe the agent is in the chamber. Okay, thank you very much. Item number 20, 35 Fox Warren Drive. This is an application to construct a new three-story detached dwelling. Committee has before a copy of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, community planning staff report, uh, a decision matrix from urban forestry. We have an email from transportation services dated February 26th with no concerns and two photos of the subject property. And we do have the agent, sir. Can you give us your name and address, please? Yeah, good afternoon, Chairman and the Committee of Adjustment. My name is Shao Wei, uh, the agent uh, on behalf of my uh, client. Okay, so have you made some revisions to your application? No. Oh, straightforward, okay. Yeah. Panel, do we need a presentation on this one? You guys good? 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 Okay, sir, we've read all the information. We're pretty comfortable with what we've read. Uh, we're going to take it into committee for a decision. We don't need a presentation. Thank you very much for coming. Thank Is you. there anything you'd like to share with us before we go into committee? No. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. We're in committee. Panel members? Comments? Motion? Carol? Uh, I can make a motion to approve this application based on the fact that the uh, variances are minor in nature. Okay, there are some planning conditions to tie to the elevations. Oh, okay. And forestry number two. Uh, yeah, um, uh, with condition for forestry, not, um, second condition for forestry, and also to take into consideration any, from the staff planning report, any any conditions. Okay, the staff planning report ties it to the east elevation. All right, motion to approve with those conditions. Can I have a seconder? Mehdi, all in favor? You have your approval, sir. Thank you very much for Thank coming you. down. I think you intimidated us. All right, shall we go back and see how Sorry, 17 is 18. Pardon me. Tilson, can we go back? All right. So we'll move on then to item number 21. And this is an application for 33 Crossburn Drive to construct a new two story detached dwelling. Committee has before it a copy of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, presentation materials from the agent, memo from urban forestry, community planning staff report dated February 29th, email from transportation services dated February 26th, memo from Metrolinx dated February 29th, tree protection bylaw declaration and an arborist report from Thomas Watson. We have one form letter in support from 17 Crossburn Drive. Do we have the agent? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and Honorable Committee members. My name is Lamore Benmore Mizrahi of LB Mizrahi Architect, Inc. at 321 Hidden Trail, North York, Ontario. I'm the architect and agent post dwelling. Okay. Uh, perhaps you could take uh, just a couple minutes to give us a brief overview, please. Sure. If I may ask the moderator to kindly share the presentation material on the screen. Great. 33 Crossburn Drive is located within an established residential neighborhood with several two-story infill developments constituting various design styles and massing as seen on the next slide. Yeah, infill houses in the area. Uh, our proposal consists of the demolition of an existing one-story dwelling and the con construction of a new two-story dwelling with an integral garage in the Tudor architectural style. A family of five will be living in this home and including the grandmother who will require wheelchair access and accessibility. Uh, prior to the hearing, packages were circulated to 20 of the surrounding neighbors, including an explanation of the requested variances. 
Uh, we've received one submitted letter of support with seven neighbors verbally expressing their support. No opposition has been submitted uh, and we will not be removing any trees on the property. Next slide, please. Uh, we are applying for six minor variances. The first variance uh, concerns lot coverage. Uh, the permitted maximum lot coverage is 25% of the lot area. The proposed is 33.8%. The existing home maintains a lot coverage of 29.7% of the lot area. Uh, the requested variance is in keeping with many approved lot coverages in the area and is due largely to the small lot size and the large footprint of the integral garage. The home still remains modest in its scale and massing. Uh, the second variance concerns building height. The permitted height is 10 meters. Our proposed height is 10.66 meters. Um, could you go to the next slide, please? The proposed uh, building height is below the approved building heights of similar homes in the area. As an example, 29 Chipping Road had a recent approved height variance of 10.71 meters. In addition, the roof is hipped away from the street and the proposed eaves are lower, such that the difference of 0 0.66 meters is not visible from street level. Um, you can see that on the east elevation. Also note the main wall height is only 6.49 meters. The third variance concerns building length. Uh, next slide please with the site plan. The permitted maximum building length for a detached house is 17 meters. The proposed building length is 18.2 meters. As mentioned in the staff report, the proposed building length is measured from the front wall to the rear wall of the first floor level and is due both to the irregular shape of the lot and the rear 2.0 meter projection or bump out at the breakfast area. That's illustrated in yellow here. The building length at the second story is only 16.19 meters. The fourth, the fourth variance concerns the proposed area of the balcony on the second floor. Uh, please refer to the second floor plan on this uh, next slide. The permitted maximum area of each platform at or above the second story, as you've heard before, is four square meters. Uh, the proposed area of the second story rear platform is 6.55 square meters. Uh, the proposed platform is in line with the end wall of the newly constructed adjacent house to the east, mitigating any overlook. Uh, the fifth variance refers to the front yard setback. Uh, site plan, please, again. The required minimum front yard setback is 7.92 meters. The proposed front yard setback is 7.51 meters. The proposed front yard setback with an overage of 0 0.41 meters is minor and is due to a small corner of the garage wall that lies beyond the front yard setback line in relation to the angular nature of the lot illustrated here in red. Uh, the main wall of the house complies with the front yard setback. The last variance is an exception to the RD zone and refers to the side yard setbacks as illustrated in, in red on the site plan. Uh, the required minimum side yard setbacks are 1.8 meters each side. Uh, just note, and the proposed side yard setback is 1.22 meters on both the east and west sides. Uh, the proposed side yard setbacks are the same as the existing setbacks. In addition, the proposed west side yard setback is set is set to 1.81 meters at the rear third section of the side wall. As seen on the uh, front elevation on the first slide, the proposed house is designed to be an integral part of the neighborhood and its natural surroundings. When taking into account the requested minor variances in relation to development in the area, it is our contention the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw is maintained and the requested variances are minor in nature. Uh, we maintain our application meets the four tests and respectfully seek approval for the relief of variances of the proposed dwelling brought forth to you today. I'm happy to answer any questions you or the speakers may, or any speakers if they are any uh, may have. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Panel, any questions? No, I don't think we have any questions. Okay. There are no speakers, so let's take this into committee. Comments, thoughts, observations, motion? Larry, what do you think? Uh, I don't really have a problem with this. Like, this is Don Mills. Uh, I'm sort of the Don Mills expert, having grown up in Don Mills. It's uh, it looks like a pretty quiet street. So if the neighbors aren't objecting to it, then this seems to be an improvement to uh, the housing in the neighborhood. So if you want, I can bring a motion to approve. Uh, sure. Okay. I'm willing to bring any, them up. I think there are some conditions. Well, subject to the conditions, whatever they are. Well, let's be clear about what they are. They're uh, planning condition tied to the site plan. There's right. forestry number three. And Metro, is Metrolink's condition or advisory? Is it advisory? Okay. 
All right. So motion from Mr. Swartz to approve this application subject to those conditions. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Ms. Martin, all in favor? You have your approval, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have Tilson on the line? No? Hi. Um, yes, we are here. Oh, good. There you are. Okay, so have you completed your calculations? Um, no. Uh, yes, yes, we did. Okay, uh, so we have the percentages uh, for you. Okay, so uh, let's let's focus so on. The, uh, the hang, hang on, hang on. Let's focus on variance number two and variance number three. Let's do variance number two first. What are you proposing? So, so the new percentage is forty-two point three percent. Forty-two point three. Thank you. And that's variance two? And number three. Yes, number three. Yes, number three is 38.4%. Soft okay. taping. That's great. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay. Are there any further questions of uh, the applicant for 27 Tilson Road? Uh, it's not, not necessarily a question, but because he's taking back the, uh, the uh, porch, so then that would affect one. So we should have the number on one, right? Because I think what he's doing is he's taking back the porch, and that gives him greater uh, landscaping. Um, oh, so he may not need the setback. Well, I think he doesn't need number one anymore, or if he, if he does. So I think just to the applicant, it's number, or he basically you're getting rid of number one, right? Okay, now. This is your front yard setback. Do you still need a variance? Uh, yes. From? So we need a variance from the east side lot, nine, lot line, but the encroachment, the front encroachment, which is 1.97, uh, that will be less than 1.5. So 1.97 part can go away, but the 0 0.3 meter from the east side lot line has to stay. Okay, so you're amending variance number one uh, from 1.97 to 1.5, but you're keeping the third point zero point mm -hmm. three meters from the east lot line. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you very much. Good clarification, Larry. Thank you. Um, any further questions? All right, then. We're going to take this into committee. Do we have any comments uh, or a motion? Uh, Jordan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm happy to provide, provide some comments. Um, I think there was a comment earlier, but my co my colleague noted uh, the uh, presence uh, of integral garages on Tilson Road, and I, I actually I, I share that observation that uh, this stretch of the street there there just aren't integral garages. Um, I actually did uh, this is one of the uh, files that I actually did a site visit just to get a better feel for the broader context, and I I did note quite a few integral garages on some of the other streets, which you know, easily fall within the broader context. But I did note something about them. So in the existing built form on the street, it's very common to have a porch come into the front yard, right? But all of these houses don't have integral garages and they don't have driveways, so they're able to meet the soft yard landscaping. In the newer developments, where there have been integral garages permitted with driveways, there is almost no porch. In a lot of cases, it's a front door with a very, very modest porch that gets you from the front door to the driveway. And I think what the issue was with this application is they were trying to propose two things. So you're either going to keep your porch, right, or you're going to propose an integral driveway and get rid of the porch to make up some of that. And I think that's, that's really what was, for me, the kind of sticking point with this. Um, I have to say, given uh, the revisions, 
pulling back of the porch. It, it, was, it was sort of an either or case. You can have a porch or a driveway, but you can't have both. Given that the porch has been pulled back uh, significantly and the variances have been improved, I will say it has certainly brought the application uh, much more in line, I think, in, and in keeping with the four tests. Um, with respect to the rear balcony, I don't really have any concerns, frankly, because the depth is only three feet. I don't really agree with the neighbor's concern that they can put furniture out there. I also note that the balcony is off of a bedroom, so it doesn't really seem like it's, a, it's going to be a gathering space. I do ever note that there is some inconsistency with respect to the drawings. So in the plan drawings, it shows that the extent of the platform or the terrace is across the entire building, but on the rear elevation, it doesn't show that. If you notice that the guard is actually... So there's some inconsistencies there, which I'm not too thrilled about. Um, but regardless, if it's an as of right, um, I, I, I'm not really too concerned with that, especially particularly given the, the depth of the lot and your comment that there is some there is a fairly large tree there to mitigate some of the uh, privacy concern. But I still um, I'm curious to see what my colleagues have to say with respect to the uh, the condition at the front, that is with the porch integral garage and how it relates to the soft landscaping. Thank you very much. Other comments? Uh, I, I, Mehdi? Yeah, I am comfortable with the revisions that the applicant is making. Uh, I would like to see the, uh, the new configuration of the uh, uh, front yard design, which is not happening now. But uh, the numbers, are, I'm comfortable. Uh, and uh, the only thing that I would recommend is to, if we want to approve this application, to uh, include a permeable paver for the driveway. Um, so that can uh, you know, address the landscaping issue a little bit more. So that's my only comment. Okay. Good. Yeah, good suggestion. Uh, Larry? So I, I just want to echo my colleagues' thoughts on the um, the balcony. I think that the applicants already agreed to uh, withdraw that. Um, so he's removing the variance, which means he can, variance. as of right, build a four meter square balcony yeah. off the bat without a variance. So yeah. he may choose to do that, and he would be totally entitled to do right. that. Yeah, the neighbors aren't here anymore, right? They left. They did. Well, they may be still online. Okay. But I didn't really have a problem with the balcony, but he's going to reduce it. So as of right, they can't say anything anyway, because he's as of right. Uh, I mean, we could do something about it, but I think he's made a good concession in terms of the applicant there. So I wouldn't have any problem with that. And in terms of now with permeable uh, driveway, perme and the fact that the applicant has uh, made a reduction to accommodate us. I mean, we could ask for more, but I think at this stage, he's, he's done a lot. I'm, okay. I'm in support of it. Okay. Anyways. Thank you very much. Uh, with, with, with the modifications, right? If we get the numbers right yeah. with the modifications. Yeah, we'll go through that. I'm in, I'm in support. With the condition. All right, I'll need a motion. Who wants to take the motion on? Uh, Jordan? Since I started, um, I will make uh, a motion to approve the subject application uh, amended as follows. So variance number two uh, will be amended from 30.39% to 42.3%. And variance number three will be amended from 29.01% uh, to 38.4%. And actually, and I apologize, I haven't done this in order. Variance number one uh, will be amended to uh, permit 1.5 meters into the required front yard setback uh, with the 0.3 meter uh, setback from the east side lot line. Um, the, uh, and, Simon, number four, uh, does it need to be similarly amended as number one is? That is correct. Thank you. Yes. No. Thank you for touching. And num yeah. number Canada. number four. Yeah. So number four is amended as yeah. number one. And number four amended as number one. So amendment to variance one, two, three, four. Um, we do have our standard uh, Sierra Urban Forestry in here, as well as uh, we've got a memo from transportation uh, recommendations, which I'd like to include as well. Uh, so did we eliminate... Yeah. And the permeable we got, yep. Did we eliminate the variance for the yeah. platform? 
variance eight. Variance so eight yeah. is also being removed. Re remove variance yeah. number yeah. eight. Can't agree. I'm fine with that. You remove variance number eight. Okay. I mean, seeing as it wasn't really represented correctly, anyways, in drawings. But he, I think he asked for it to be removed. So we'll accommodate I'm, the applicant. I'm happy with that. I Great. think four square meters will be sufficient. All right. Uh, Mr. Allison has moved a motion to approve with those conditions, including permeable pavers for the driveway. Do I have a seconder? I second that. Mr. Schwartz? I second too. Second it. All in favor? You have your approval, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, committee members. Okay. Do we move to number 22? <laughs> Mr. Chair, through you, there are a number of registered speakers, but we're unsure the relationship to the application. So as we unmute them, if you can kindly ask them what their relationship is. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we move to number 22, 9 Embla Street. This is an application to construct a new semi-detached dwelling with attached garage and full basement. Committee has before it a copy of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. Two cover letters from the agent dated February 12th and February 28th. Revised plans received February 28th. A revised zoning notice dated February 28th. Additional support materials and photos and aerial photos. A letter from the agent dated March 5th, 2024, responding to concerns. And a community planning staff report dated February 29th. We have form letter one form letter in support from 11 Embla, and we have one letter of opposition from 12 Wren Court. Do we have the agent with us? Yes, um, I'm Paige Reicha of 222 The Esplanade, Toronto, Ontario. And I just want to make a correction. There are two supporting letters that were su uh, submitted. Okay, I only, oh, you're absolutely right. One from 11 Embla and one from 14 Wren Court. Thank you for the correction. Okay, uh, are you presenting or it looks like you've got a colleague there with you? Yes, yeah, so I will be presenting for part of this and then the owner will be picking up and presenting the rest. Okay, can we have his name and address please? Through you, Mr. Uh, Chair. I'm not sure if he's unmuted. Oh. Is it Arvin? Yes. So through you, Mr. Chair, they're going to split the five minutes. Yes. They're not going to get five each. No, no, you, you have five minutes collectively, but I just want to get the name of the other speaker on record. My name is Larvin Farahman. My address is 9 Embolus Street. I'm the owner of the house. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, Ms. Rich, uh, uh, over to you. Okay, great. Um, so I will start by confirming the changes to the original application. Uh, oh, yes. The following variances have been revised as follows. So we received a report from planning staff uh, to revise variance number four, which is for lot coverage. We originally had 38% and we have now reduced it to 34.98% as requested by planning staff. Uh, they gave our bless or their blessing for that. Um, but in order to achieve this, uh, we re reduced the footprint of the house and eliminated the front porch stairs, which then removed variance number two from the list as well. So that left that leaves only four variances. Um, so the lot coverage variance has plenty of precedence in the neighborhood, such as 75 Cottonwood, 80 South Hill Drive, and 80 North Hills Terrace, which all are around the 30, 35% mark. The, remain, the remaining variances remain unchanged. The front yard setback for variance number one pertains only to the garage portion of the house. Variance three is regarding the number of stories. Uh, since the garage must be at grade level for a car to access it, this meant the garage floor would be lower than the main floor or the main level floor. There would be excessive ceiling height in the garage before reaching the second floor. So in order to utilize this space so it's not wasted, uh, the design includes a half story, which is sandwiched between level one and level two. The height of the second floor remains consistent with the neighboring houses and the roof line reflects this by only being an additional 19 centimeters over the semi-detached neighbor's roof line. While this configuration may give the impression of additional stories from the front elevation, the overall height of the house is congruent with neighboring properties and planning staff had no issues with this either. Um, we aren't asking for a height variance here. It's still within 
the 10 meter, uh, it's actually 8.9 meters for reference. So it's still below the zoning bylaw. Finally, the last variance is for the second floor platform area that is very minor as we are only requesting a 2.04 meter square increase. And we've received supporting letters from semi-detached neighbor at 11 Embla, uh, the rear neighbor at 14 Ren Court. Uh, our proposal not only addresses the functional needs of the owner, but also maintains visual coherence of neighboring houses. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, I'll just leave that to Arvin to f wrap up and he say a few words. Okay, uh, Arvin. I think you might need to unmute him. Uh, he, Arvin, I think you're unmuted. Yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, dear committee members, I want to thank you for letting me speak today. My name is Arvin Farahman, as I said, and I'm the owner of Nine Ambulance Street. I'll read a little fast for purposes of time. I come before you with an application for minor variances for our future family home. My goal with the design has always been to have a house that meets the need of our growing multi-generational family for it to be accessible for my elderly father and to provide work from home space for me and my wife and to maximize the outdoor space and landscaping that our family enjoys as much as possible. A key goal was also for the design to be harmonious with our neighborhood in massing, size and aesthetic. I believe we've succeeded in all respects. The proposed design is modest and massing and takes its cues and is similar to houses nearby and most closely resembles neighboring series of semi-detached homes from 18 to 32 Fox and Road, as well as 80 South Hill Drive. Before this application to the committee was made, I and my wife, we met with many neighbors and discussed the proposed design in depth and received nearly unanimous support. Any feedback they had was integrated into design before being submitted to the committee. We've recently updated the plans to incorporate the recommendations by city planning staff. Um, as my colleague noted, this eliminated one variance and reduced the scope of the lot coverage down to 35%. Given the lot, it was very difficult to design a house that met our needs without triggering the variances you see before you, but we believe that they're all minor in nature and that there are many examples of similar variances having been approved in our neighborhood. Here to answer any questions you may have and hope for a favorable decision by the committee. Thank you very much, sir. Panel, any questions of the speakers? Okay. I just want to clarify because they made the modification. Did we take note of that? Yeah, they went through the variances and made the change. Okay, but they, they took out, like, uh, do we have a neighbor who's speaking against this? Because yes, so a, we'll hear oh, from the okay. neighbor, and then we can circle back if you have some outstanding concerns. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. I'm Jessica Soul. Is your from, speaker on? Is your microphone uh, on there? I, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. oh, there you go. Okay. Just speak loudly. Oh, okay. But before I start, uh, can I use two minutes before I start the... the uh, you have five minutes in total. Oh, okay, because they have a, a, a adjustment. I didn't. I didn't need to know. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm having difficulty hearing you. So if you could just oh, okay. speak into the microphone. Thank That's you. It's okay. Okay. Um, Jessica So, the owner of tw uh, Twelve Rangot. Great. Thank you. I just want to uh, come here today to express my concerns about the proposal of uh, Number Nine Amber Street to construct a new semi-detached dwelling. Um, we have a direct and permanent impact because we share more than 17 feet, around 45% of the backyard property line. And this uh, enlargement extension with the three storage height is around 29 feet, extended mainly from the existing carport. They, that's uh, all in close proximity within our visual field. I have submitted my comments to the committee. The most concerned variance is the permitted maximum number of storage is two, but the proposed number is three. And the variance number four, the permitted maximum lot coverage is 30% of the lot area, but the proposed is 38%. But I can see there's a revise there to 34.98% on February 28th. Uh, since this whole extension and enlargement with the 29 feet tall building is mainly from the existing carport, 
Number nine, Amber Street is a sloped lot and already in an elevated position. Together with this three storey height, we will have a direct and permanent impact. <clears throat> As this liquid canoe blocks the view and sunlight to half of my backyard, it would not be justified or fair to support the conform conformity to the height requirement of the bylaw only based on the given design or the style of the building without considering the full impact to the neighbor who is directly involved. I'm at the back of the owner, okay? This impact is not minor to us. Approving such a proposal will also set an undesirable precedent. Imagine it's number seven, because we are semi-detached. Number seven, Amber Street, they want to rebuild home like the number nine with the same extension, height, or dimension from his carport. Then my whole backyard will be a continuous row of three stories house right in front of my eyes, backing all the spaces. We destroy the wheel and sunlight that I have been enjoying with my family during this last past 17 years. And that is the unique design of this single family community that we cherish. That's why the height of the extended portion of the, from the carport, I'm mainly concerned about the area from the carport, should not be at most, should be at most the level of the if, if trough or existing roof, and definitely not be higher than the top of the roof rib of the existing house to maintain reasonable wearing space for the neighbor. This is similar to an extension of another Amber Street house completed years ago. In the February 28th review site, Mr. Ferrahman had the opportunity to reduce the variance of the lot coverage from 38% to 30% to meet the zoning requirement. But however, he chose to reduce the lot coverage to 34.98%, that is 141.89 square meter, which still represents 16.6%, more than the maximum 30% per meter lot area of 121.67 square meter. The existed lot area is 20.22 square meter. This variance is not minor to us because we are in a very small community. This result in an excessive portion of the new house that would be allowed to have a 25 to 29 feet height, which would occupy the currently open space above the carport and further block sunlight. In comparison, all the houses on Amber Street and Rancourt are similar are semi-detached single-family homes, mostly with similar size, size and height as the planned to be demolished home, which only have lot coverage of 86.08 square meter. This figures from their site plan. I'm here not to stop my neighbor from building his home. Ma'am, I'm just going to, your time is up. Yeah, I'm just going to ask you, ma'am, just going to ask you to wrap up, please. Yes, I rather, I'm here to emphasize the importance of following up, following and upholding zoning bylaw. The proposed new drawing should respect the scale and proportion of the house, along with the street and neighbor, and the decision of the committee should consider special circumstances within the environment. Everybody should have an equal opportunity to enjoy the nat natural beauty and sunlight in the backyard of their home. Hope, uh, we hope that the committee will uphold the zoning by law and agree that the proposed variances are not minor. Thank Great. you. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming down. Okay, we, any questions of the speaker? Could we get the agent back on the line, please? Hi. Can everyone hear me? Yes, please go ahead and if you could respond to what okay. we just heard. Excellent. Yep, uh, so I hear her concerns. 
However, I believe that the concerns are stemming from a misunderstanding of the drawings. Uh, the house will be approximately one foot higher than the existing house. Uh, the half story is only seen from the front elevation and not from the rear. So from the rear, from her view, it would still appear as a two story. So we are meeting what she would like to see as it being the same height as the existing house, roughly. Um, so we're keeping in, in the same uh, height restriction as, or not restriction, but height of adjacent properties. The restriction is 10 meters, so we could build even higher if if we wanted to. That's not um, what we're asking for today. Um, and I do want to point out that the portion of the design that will be built where the carport is considered, um, or where the carport is, is considered as of right. Regardless of the requested variances, the owner has the right to build here based on setbacks laid out in the bylaw. And again, as I said, can be built up to 10 meters if the owner wishes. Um, the additional 4.98% of loft coverage is only 20.22 meters squared. I believe um, she had said something much greater than that, so I just wanted to clarify that. Um, and I'm not sure if Arvin has anything else to add here, but he can maybe fill in. I do, actually. Um, uh, thank you. So one of the responses that I want to give is, you know, I, I read her letter uh, that she was concerned. And just to, to make it clear to the committee, I've tried several times to reach out to uh, this neighbor uh, over text message explained the height difference. I essentially just got in terms of reply that we're too busy. So I, you know, I've, I've offered to meet with them and go through the concerns so we can actually understand and look at the drawings. But with respect to her concern about, for example, sunlight, our lot is north of her property. We would not be blocking any sunlight. Um, and I believe we, as per, in the presentation that we provided, there are a number of large trees that already obstruct the views between our homes. Um, and as my colleague said, the massing that we're proposing is uh, only about actually 19 centimeter taller than the existing uh, property that's on the uh, that's sitting there and uh, budding the neighbor, and that's mostly due to the roof sloping, uh, because we're going out back about seven feet to maintain the you know minimum uh, slope roof ratio for the uh, for the gable. We have to raise the center ridge, um, and um, we're we're well below what we're allowed to to build. And uh, as they said, as she said rather, I think most of the complaint is stemming from a confusion between number of stories and actual building height. Uh, whether, you know, in this 29 feet, we put two stories or three stories, uh, doesn't actually change the overall height of the building. And the three story is really a half story, the technicality for the above garage space that we're using. And if we don't get the variance, we'll just, you know, end up with a large storage space built into the above garage, which will be mostly useless. Yes, and if we could please um, show the supplementary photos that were submitted yesterday, um, that will better articulate the proximity of 12 Ren to the proposed construction. And if I may interject here for a second, the neighbors that will be most affected by this, which will be 14 Ren and 11 Ambulat, the neighbors to the north, uh, and the neighbor to the north of 12 Ren have both support our application. Okay, thank you. We're just trying um, to pull up your photos. There they are. Thank you. Yes. Um, so here you can see the aerial view of the proposed at 9 Embla shown in the red uh, marker, and then 12 Ren Court is in the yellow. If you pan down to um, the corner here, uh, perfect. Yep, this is perfect. Uh, you can see all of those trees are actually at the back of Nine Embla Street, so they're on Nine Embla Street's property, and it will remain there. So if you go down another page, you can see barely anything based on a Google Street or Google Street View um, from Ren Court. You can barely see anything through the trees um, from a bird's eye view. If you scroll down the next page you'll be able to see from the rear yard, this is at the back of the existing carport on 9 Embla. There are a ton of trees here, so you really can't see much um, through the foliage. Okay. Mr. Chair, I just want to... Thank you. So hang on a sec. Thank you very much. Um,
Mr. Swartz. So I, I just want to understand because you made modifications to your application and I, just so I get it right, I, I know that the uh, staff report had four recommendations. I think you've accepted them all, have you not? And, and, and what way does that impact on the uh, five variances that you were requesting so we get it right when we're uh, approving this? Yeah, absolutely. So variance number four, that is for lot coverage, and we reduced it from 38% to 34.98%. So by doing this, we eliminated variance number two because there's no longer any porch stairs. Okay. And the rest remain the same. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Jordan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have a question about um, the mature tree uh, that's close to uh, where the extension is. Uh, on the site plan, it's noted as about a meter in diameter, uh, directly adjacent to the Permeal Bull driveway. Um, what's, what are the plans for that tree there? So if I may uh, speak to that, um, that, that tree actually was in the initial survey when we purchased the house. Uh, the neighbor immediately to ourselves had concerns about that tree and we got an arborist report the tree was actually dead and had fungus so that tree's been removed altogether okay thanks and we had a permit um, we applied for a permit it's been removed um, it just wasn't updated on the drawings when we did the drawings uh, for the design and submitted the committee oh, that's sufficient thank you uh, so does the revised site plan that is attached to the planning staff report reflect the removal of variance number two? The ones that you're looking at right now, no, but if you scroll down that says revised plans February 28th, 2024, that is the updated one. So those that set plan does show and the changes have been clouded. So, so if we if we were to approve this and tie it to plans, that's the one we should tie it to? That's the one. Okay. All right, any further questions? I think we're good. Into committee, comments? Well, I, I, I'm Larry? prepared to move uh, approval of this. Like, I've walked this street dozens and dozens of times. Both streets, again, I'm the Don Mills person, so I've been on the street. And uh, they've accepted all the uh, conditions of staff. I think it's, uh, it, it's an improvement on the existing uh, building there. I think it enhances the value of the neighborhood by creating uh, improved uh, building form. I don't see that it impacts on the uh, neighbor despite the comments. Uh, I, I really don't see that. Like uh, I, I, having walked on this street and know where it is, I, and I see approvals from other people. I know people in Don Mills are very protective of their properties and they should be, but I just see this as being an improvement all the way around. So. Okay, I'd recommend moving a motion. Yeah, I'd, I'd make the motion to accept it with the modifications as the uh, applicant has made. Um, so the, the front yard setback be developed as substantially in accordance with the site plan. That's the staff re report. So let's just one. make sure we're tied to the right site plan, the one that was submitted that we got the latest right. one. February 28th okay. site plan. Good. The eliminate variance number two which is in the staff report and as accepted by the applicant. Um, the number of stories be developed substantially in accordance with the front elevation drawing that is in the February 28th report, or the February 28th okay. uh, site plan. And number four is And number four uh, as in the uh, staff report um, has be, uh, would be uh, imposed on uh, variance number four, the other variances to stand as in their application. So I'd make that motion. So moved by Mr. Swartz. Uh, Are you, Mr. Chair, happy to second it. I think it's a very, just like to add this as a actually a quite good application. If you look at the size of the existing dwelling, it, it, this is a, it's a really good use of uh, intensification. Yep, I'd agree. So moved by Mr. Swartz, seconded by Mr. Allison. All in favor? You have your approval. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming down. We are done the afternoon session. Shall we take a break until...
maybe 4.05? Okay. Sure. We're, we'll be back at 4.05. Okay. Hmm? Oh, fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Uh, how are you feeling? Okay. Uh, it's not today. 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 Should be there. For, for, for 96 calls? Yeah, I sure. sure. It's there, right? Um, it should be. It's not, so I almost would be. Uh, so we'll see. I almost would be. It's fine, don't worry. Um, what, what, what's your question? Uh, you're on 385 Whitmore <laughs> Avenue. Okay. Yeah. But I'm also sp here to speak on behalf of the woman at 387, and sure. I have her authorization. You just have to indicate that for me. I, I will. Okay. And I have her authorization. Like, we even emailed the letter. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. Do you think it's gonna? It's gonna start shortly. Um, so it's the first. Nobody else. Are we um, the first ones? It's the first one for the four o'clock uh, session. I'm so happy. Um, <laughs> I'm so shaky. Um, so it's just the when they call the speaker, you're just gonna speak over here. Okay. And um, the microphone. Just um, you, you just have to hit the button. So there. say that again. Just to start the microphone, you just have yeah. to mute it. And um, to, to unmute it. Now the other thing is, I um, actually prepared copy of my speaking notes for
<laughs> Thank you. You guys are great. Thank you. Behind, just in time to get into rush hour traffic. Yeah, perfect. You know there's a subway. Uh, folks, are we ready to go? We're ready to go. Okay. Good afternoon. In accordance with sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. My name is Larry Clay and I'll be uh, chairing today's session, this afternoon's session. Panel members are Carol Martin, Jordan Allison, Larry Schwartz, and Mehdi Marziari. Uh, Simon Lamb is our Deputy Secretary Treasurer for today. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on as the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and are now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Committee of Adjustment Panel hearings are now conducted in a hybrid in-person and virtual format. Some applicants and participants will make their submissions in person and others will participate virtually by electronic means through WebEx. The meetings are also streamed on the City of Toronto's planning YouTube channel and anyone wishing to view the hearing may watch on YouTube. Those who want to participate virtually and have registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smartphone or telephone and have the option of participating via video or audio only. All virtual participants will be automatically muted upon entry when your item is called, you will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called on to speak. Those participating by video appearance will be temporarily, temporarily upgraded by, to panelists when your item is being held. During this time, your camera will be enabled. You will be only visible during your five minute allotted speaking time. At all other times, your video will be disabled and you will be reinstated as an attendee. For both in-person and virtual participants, Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with the written submission deadline. Those participating through WebEx are not allowed to use share screen or any other panelist controls during a video appearance. People attending in person today who want to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must fill out a decision request card and those participating virtually need to submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, email address because the Committee of Adjustment and the Toronto Local Appeal Body will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, you may be able to appeal the decision of the Toronto Local Appeal Body or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. However, the provincial government amended the Planning Act and generally removed rights of third parties to appeal Committee of Adjustment decisions. Only the applicant, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, specified persons and public bodies are permitted to appeal decisions of the Committee of Adjustment. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. Today I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with their presentation if desired. When the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when you will reach you in the five minutes. Any presentation or other materials you wish to submit to the committee must have been emailed in advance of the hearing. Staff and committee members cannot accept materials at the hearing. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name and address. Please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and make a presentation to the committee on the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain re revisions to the proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice the application are informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Generally, we call on speakers in the hearing room and then those participating through WebEx. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they have finished their presentation and when all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This will mark the end of the discussion and the application will be taken into committee for a decision. 
Um, are there any declarations of interest from staff or the panel? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I have a uh, conflict with application number 28. Uh, address is 504 Cranbrook Avenue. The uh, reason for that is I know the owner uh, is a friend. Okay, thank you very much. And with that, we will, there's any deferrals for the 4 o'clock session? Through you, Mr. Chair, I don't have any deferrals. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, we proceed with item number 23. 96 Belgravia Avenue. This is an application to construct a new three-story fourplex. Item was deferred from October 12, 2023 for discussions with community planning. Committee has in front of it a copy of the survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevation, 16 photos of the subject property, presentation materials from the agent, uh, Metrolink's advisory memo dated February 29th, and minutes from the Committee of Adjustment meeting of October the 12th. We have one letter of opposition from 86 Belgravia. Do we have the agent? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. I am Evangelista on behalf of the owners of Belgravia, number 96. Good afternoon, Ms. Evangelista. <laughs> All right, uh, we have, uh, hang on here a second. We do have someone that would like to speak to this item. So Ida, if you could give us a presentation, that'd be great. And speaking a little bit to the deferral from October as well. Okay, um, so what you have in front of you, um, it is a, a revised um, application from the previous application. Um, it's, it's a complete redesign um, aesthetically. Uh, the interior, um, we've recessed it back. We've shortened the house. We've increased the side yards. So um, the application that you have now in front of you has been perfected. Planning is okay with it. Transportation is okay with it. Um, forestry, we are in acceptance of their conditions. So what we are proposing here is a fourplex. And as we all know, back in May of 2023, City Council adopted an, an OPA and ZBA to permit multiplexes citywide. And this is um, what we're proposing here. Uh, our side yard on our west side, we are asking um, for 0.61. Uh, my apologies on the east side. Um, we have increased the west side to comply, so we are only asking for a small um, setback on um, the east side. Our building height is 11.53 because it is taken to the top of the parapet. Um, to the finished, uh, to from established grade to uh, finished ceiling height, it is 11.07. So, which is undiscernible um, from to the from from the street. Um, the the other um, variants we have a couple of variances that relate to the to the balconies. So, when this was adopted back in May 2023, it was recognized and it was also stated that each unit is permitted a balcony at both the front and the back of the unit. We opted not to do the two balconies. We opted to do one and have it a slightly larger than your, your four square meters. This allows um, for safety, like for fire. Um, so it helps with the um, OBC. Um, it allows for light and air. And the variances numbers four, five, and six all relate to the balconies. And you'll see that um, what I have shown you um, on page four of my, my submission, you'll see that um, I have highlighted the variances relating to the balconies. So we are asking for balconies a little bit larger. Um, it is you know, consistent. There are many homes around here. Uh, a lot of the homes on Hopewell all have rooftop balconies. Um, so this is not something, this is not out of the ordinary for this particular neighborhood. Um, you know, we do also have to keep in mind that this is a five minute walk. 
from here, from this, from Belgravia to the new Eglinton Oakwood LRT, it is a five minute walk. So we want to increase intensification closer to the subways. I've also provided you um, photos of other homes in the neighborhood. 419 Whitmore, who has a, a rooftop balcony. Um, 391, who also uh, has proposed a three-story. We have many uh, triplexes, duplexes in this neighborhood. Uh, you'll also note that on my aerial view and my building footprint, you'll notice that the intensification that we are proposing in relation to the side yard setbacks is quite consistent with um, what already exists in this neighborhood. The, um, the two variances that relate to, number, like variances seven and eight, that relates to the lot area and the lot frontage, this is a, an existing lot. Unfortunately, that cannot be changed. This is something that, um, you know, this is an eclectic area of various lot sizes, lot areas. So, and that is just um, a variance that is existing. So in closing, I respectfully submit that this is a form of intensification that meets the four tests. It is in keeping and um, purpose and intent of the um, new official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment and is appropriate and desirable for the area. I'm open to any questions or we can leave questions until we hear it from the neighbor. Thank you. Uh, any burning questions, folks? Okay. Why don't we hear from uh, the uh, first speaker? Oh, we have more than one. Yes. So, is our sorry, ma'am? Are you speaking? Okay. Okay. Do you want to come up to the podium? Sorry. Please? No, no. Come on up. If you can, I don't know if the microphone is on there. If you could turn it on. Can you hear me? Yes. That's oh, good. good. Okay. Okay, if you could give us your name and address, yes, please. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Pam DiNardo, and I own the house at 384, sorry, 385 Whitmore Avenue with my son, Mark. Uh, our house is located just behind 96 Belgravia, but on a diagonal, kitty corner. Okay, so I'm here to represent my son and I, and I'm also here to speak on behalf of Rachel Kula, who lives, who lives directly behind the proposed structure at 387 Whitmore. She's given me authorization to speak on her behalf, and I've provided the confirmation of that. Okay, I understand the need for more housing and that four plexes are now allowed in Toronto, and I'm not disputing that. I, I get it, I hear the news all the time. Okay, so, but getting to our situation, Currently, all of the homes that surround this particular proposed fourplex, with the exception of one, they are all single-story homes. Uh, also, due to the, there's a gradual sloping in the area, so the land that this fourplex will be built on is slightly higher than the homes in the back. Like, our, our, it's higher than 385 and 387. So we're already down like a foot and a half lower uh, in terms of grade level. Okay, so needless to say, this proposed building with its three stories will rise extremely high and block significant sunlight to these backyards, particularly the backyard directly behind. And she, my neighbor, is going to lose substantial, well, a substantial amount of the sun for most of the day. However, in reading all of the requested variances, there was one that really stood out to, to us. It's number five. It pertains to the three balconies in the back. The current bylaw states that the maximum allowable area for each platform is four square meters. This builder is asking to more than double that to 8.8 .8 square meters for each balcony. This is not a minor variance, but a major one. And we are extremely concerned and troubled by this. 
And I will note the previous speaker said she noted that there are rooftop balconies, but there are not where there's three of them overlooking. I understand one rooftop balcony, but we would have three balconies overlooking our backyards. Okay, so the enormous size of these three proposed balconies will result in a significant loss of privacy for these people living in the homes to, in the back and to the sides. They will tower over our gardens and homes and face directly into the windows of, our, of the adjacent homes. They will, because they are larger, they will encourage a lot of social activity and gatherings and will be on multiple levels. So we're concerned about the potentially excessive noise coming from three balconies and how it can significantly reduce the quality of life for us and our neighbors and our ability to enjoy our own gardens. Okay, we know we can't do much about the loss of sunlight. We, 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 we know. However, we have one request that we would like to make. Our request here today is to have the balconies reduced in size to the current bylaw maximum of four square meters. And with that, hopefully, improve the privacy and quality of life for us, the neighbors. And I hope you will seriously consider this request to have the size of these balconies reduced. I thank you for your time. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions of the speaker? No, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you coming down. Thank you very much. It was that important for us. I understand. <laughs> okay, thank you. Do I just give this to you? Do we, we have another speaker? Okay. Hi, hi, this is Patrick from the backyard. So three, seven and nine, reach more. So we review uh, Patrick, the documents. Uh, Patrick, uh, we have to Patrick, make sorry for, Patrick, I'm sorry yeah. for I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah. Uh, could you give us your full name, please? Yeah. Full name is F E I Y U E. Uh, last name X I O N G. I okay. send an email and I receive that uh, access code. Great. Can Thanks you very much. That? Okay. Go ahead. You okay. have five minutes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, okay. So uh, I will not repeat the same question with the uh, the speaker before. I try to say something different than them. Okay. First, the one I just pull off all the history of all the, you know, the house. How the triplex, duplex, they do have a triplex. I didn't see any uh, fourplex there. So my first question is the professor Dobbers uh, have a big question that is not desirable. Make sure that is desirable for the uh, neighborhood, right? There's a fourplex. Is it some can you, uh, I'm not sure the um, any company reason to have a fourplex there. That's that's a little bit aggressive, okay? So uh, the big question that like, you can have a triplex. You know, almost still Toronto City with a house shortage, right? But uh, this is a very tiny lot, a lot of 25 by 11, 10 feet. It's more acute lot. You have a triplex, duplex, fine. I'm not sure what's the company reason to have a fourplex there. Okay, so that's my first question. The second question, I, you know, I reviewed the, the mine orange item, right? I just the the ladies on front of me, they're talking about the backley. I will not. I just add a two cents there. The um, most likely, this fourplex, if it's permanent there, it should be four talents, all right? Maybe, maybe more than three talents there. I'm not sure. It's a little bit awkward for the, um, you know, the, the the other house, right? The backyard. People watch the time, but three talents at the same time. I'm not sure. You have the fourplex, but they don't want to sacrifice the other benefit. We have fit the other tenant. Uh, the, the, the residents here, right? So the, the backlit, you have a three, right? And then the error, I don't want to repeat that again. And the uh, second, I'm talking about a worry about that, um, you know, the the higher, right? The side, the maximum height, the all side to the main floor is 11.53. That's a giant compared with 8.5. It's a more than three meters high on the side each. So that's really weird. We have, my house is a bungalow there, so uh, you can have a three floor there, but as the high is really concerned for that uh, neighborhood, you know, try to make sure it's logical, right? And also the lot area, the requirement in lot area should be 360 meters, uh, square meters. Right now, 
There's a tiny loft, 255. That's more than 100 square meters of that. A percentage is 41%. That's really the invariance is not minor. It's huge, right? So I have two questions to summarize. The first one, the question is desirable or not. You can have a triplex, duplex, or whatever. Uh, fourplex, I didn't see any. I, I pull out all this, all the history. I don't have the free picture. Maybe the city planner gentlemen have the, all the information there. If the fourplex is, uh, is permitted here, I think uh, there are a lot of people are invested, maybe put as a benchmark to have more, more fourplex there. That's maybe disaster for that neighborhood, right? So, second is that the cover variance is not minor for sure. The factor numbers, the errors, the high, the buildings, and a lot of errors really disturb us for the, for the neighborhood. Sorry, no offense. So that's my true opinion. I finish. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, sir. Any questions of this speaker? You're welcome. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other registered speakers? Nope. Okay, Ms. Evangelista. Um, yes, okay. Uh, I can understand it, you know, can be quite daunting for the neighborhood. This is a very eclectic um, neighborhood that we have here. We, we do have three stories. We have duplexes, triplexes. We do have bungalows. We have story and a half. Um, what we're proposing, uh, the multiplex, it is a triplex. The uh, fourth unit is in the basement. Uh, the one thing that I would like to say, and I, and I understand, um, you know, uh, Ms. DiNardo, um, who spoke on behalf of herself and uh, Ms. Kula, at 387, um, I, I understand that uh, having the three balconies in the back, uh, as we know, this is um, warranted under OBC. We are prepared to make the balcony smaller so that it's not, even at the area that it is, it's not uh, um, an area where they can gather and have parties, but we are willing to make them smaller to six square meters. And um, that would be, uh, I believe that would, um, you know, that would uh, help them in having a comfort level in um, her comment of making the balcony smaller. So um, six meters from an 8.886 meters is um, substantial difference. Um, the other thing that we can do is to mitigate, you know, just some privacy uh, and sound is you know, we can plant some trees across, you know, on the perimeter of the um, the lot itself. Um, if that would help, that could be something that um, you know the owners can meet with them and have that conversation with them. Um, the the height that we're asking for is a height that is um, allowable in the area. This is a flat roof house, and that's why. Um, we have the variance for the for the main wall height, but the overall height in this area is 11 meters. As I explained, to the top of the the ceiling height of the home, it is 11.07. The remainder is the parapet to allow for scuppers, um, mechanical, and whatnot. And uh, what we're proposing is. Um, a multiply a, a triplex in an area where there are many other triplexes on Whitmore, on Belgravia, on um, you know along Oakwood. It's within you know it's a five minute walk with you know from the new TTC. It has TTC all along Dufferin, all along um, Oakwood, so and Eglinton. So it, it is this a struck. Uh, a multiplex like this is welcomed in an area that you're so close to the TTC. So, and if if committee prefers that I do reduce the area um, of the balconies, which would be variance number five, uh, it would then read uh, second, third, fourth floor being an area of six square meters. Okay, thank you. So uh, you're proposing that, are you, Ida? 
Um, uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I am proposing that because I, I understand that the neighbor behind um, uh, Ms. Donardo, she requested that we make it smaller and um, I respect that. Uh, variance number six is also a uh, platform. So that would also read six square meters. Okay. Uh, you also made reference to privacy screening. What would you propose? Um, what we could do is we could propose on the, I believe it would be the west side, we can do a privacy screening. Either we could do like an opaque glass, something that's about, you know, um, or we could do um, a vegetative, uh, vegetation um, screening, something that it would have to be appealing and aesthetically pleasing um, to the neighbors because you know, we, we would want something nice because as you can see from the design of the house, um, you know, the design is, um, it's actually a very nice home. So we want to keep something that is aesthetically pleasing to um, those that will be living in the home and the neighbors that will be viewing it. So opaque glass to one and a half meter. Would you be okay with that? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're good I, with that. Yeah, I, I, I think vegetative uh, barriers are kind of great, but not for all season, and they don't work really all that well. Okay. I agree, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you. Panel, any questions? Betty? I have a question, yes, uh, from the applicant. Um, I understand the requirement for a second stair, as it's a fourplex and it's uh, more than three stories, so you need another stair, but I don't... I am looking at the plan and I can see that you use, uh, you're not using the balcony for exiting. The balcony is uh, being used as a balcony, as a place to, uh, as an extension place of the living space. Am I correct? Or you're using that for the stair landing? Um, through you, Mr. Chair, we do have to have some form of protection there under OBC. If we were to leave it open from the balcony, uh, it would be, it, it, it is, you know, a safety concern. No, my question is why you couldn't keep the balconies at four square meter? This is my question. Um, what, um, through, through you, Mr. Chair Member, uh, the reason why we increased it is um, under this, the new multiplex bylaw, it does state that we can have a balcony per unit at the front and another one at the back. And what we decided to do so that we're not encroaching on the property and it's just a gradual in fitting uh, to the character of the neighborhood, we decided to just put in one balcony slightly larger than what is permitted. So this also allows for um, you know, for safety, uh, it allows for um, light into, into their homes because they have the light going in through the front and the light going into the back. And um, this is why we are proposing the six, I've now changed it to six square meters. So just to clarify, this is not an OBC requirement, correct? We do need, we do need balconies um, on, on the units. It is well, an OBC not, you're requirement. Not using that. You're not using that as an exiting. Why do you need a balcony there? But in the, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, in the event that um, there is a, a safety concern or a, there's a rescue that is required, they need an area where the, it's, it's almost like an area of refuge that they can go to and be rescued. That, that is now the new OBC um, requirements. From from, and from what I've been told by buildings. Jason, thank you, Mr. And, Chair. And I would like to add. Yes. I, my apologies. My apologies. I would like to add. We do have 21 letters of support um, from the area residents. Um, do we? I don't have any record of that. Simon, do we have? Anything that came in late? Uh, Ida, we don't have anything. Did you was, submit? Did you submit those to us? 
It was, um, Mr. Chair, it was it was provided on, so it was, the letters of support were provided on the larger scale um, development. And when they were reapproached, um, they were much happier with our new approach to the to the new building. So you submitted those back in October then? Yes. Okay. All right. I I I, I don't have them at my fingertips, but yeah, I just want to confirm that if that's okay, Simon. So continue on. Jordan has a question. Through you, Mr. Chair. I I got a little bit of I'm a little bit hung up on variance number three, particularly with respect to the side main wall height um, as it relates to the front. And I'm just curious, um, perhaps some clarification from the applicant. Um, I mean, I have, I have two concerns. One, I'm I'm just curious you know, why there wasn't any effort made to kind of mitigate that impact of the side main wall on the front main wall, particularly, you know, where you have a staircase coming up that's already a story and a half below. My understanding is above that plat, that landing on the stair is essentially just dead space that we're building out on the front main wall at close to 12 meters. So that's, and I guess maybe to sort of ask the applicant to speak to that, and I'm I'm having trouble finding some precedent um, at this building at this height in the neighborhood, particularly on the front main wall. Oftentimes, when we do see height of that type, it's mitigated by a pitched roof, or sometimes it's an architectural detail that comes up. But in this case, it's just the entire building, and um, I'm just curious to see to know why. Particularly on the front main wall, there wasn't really any effort made to mitigate that impact uh, as seen from the street. Is it, is it space required or? Um, through you, Mr. Chair. So under the, um, the new OPA and the um, new zoning bylaw amendment, as it relates to multiplexes, um, we are permitted to have the full height of the building um, from front to back. And that allows for, um, because our, our floor to ceiling height is only nine feet. It's not that we're asking for um, 10 foot ceilings, it's nine foot ceilings. This allows for, because in this particular neighborhood, we have um, singles, we have families, and this allows for the opportunity to have, being a, a full uh, floor, it allows the opportunity to have a two bedroom house, right? Um, with, with space. And the bylaw, the zoning examiner, and it was, it was something that it was a conversation that was had with the zoning examiner. Um, because now from um, my understanding, there is now a flat roof bylaw and that side exterior main wall, although I have to leave that there, um, that shouldn't exist anymore. Uh, the only variance that should exist is the 11.53, but I cannot make that change because that is what the zoning examiner through their interpretation at that time prior to um, the flat roof, um, that is what they have included. So because this falls under the multiplex um, bylaw and amendment, what we're proposing falls under the criteria to allow for um, full floor and to allow for families to be able to um, accommodate. So why do we need the variance if it's an as of right? This I, is where I'm lost. I, because, no, I, I cannot. Yeah. I had the conversation with the zoning examiner and if I were to remove that variance, she has um, the right to, uh, to to actually not push this through to zoning certificate. So I have to leave that variance. Okay, uh, Simon? Through you, Mr. Chair, staff have looked through the file uh, for 96 Belgravia. We don't see any letters of support. Is there a package that perhaps you can, a historical package, perhaps you can send us? Yeah, I'll, 
Yeah, I will pull it for you and I'll email it to you, Simon. Okay, um, Jordan, are you, it, it's, it, I don't think you're clear on this one. No, I'm not. I frankly, I just, I don't, if I might, maybe I'll just. So the issue, yeah. uh, Ida, is you, you, you need the variance. I mean, it, you know, fourplexes are mostly as a right, but you need the variance because your, your side wall is higher than what the bylaw allows. My, my side wall is higher than what the bylaw allows. Right. The, through the interpretation, as you know, um, through you, Mr. Chair, um, Mr. Chairman, you know that um, zoning examiners have their own interpretation and the interpretation of this zoning examiner felt that they still wanted to keep that variance in, although it is understood that this is um, under the new official plan amendment and new zoning bylaw amendment for uh, multiplex, right, which where would, it only relates to overall height. Which, if that was the case, you wouldn't need that variance. Right. However, I was specifically asked if I remove the variance, and when it, it goes to the building permit stage, she has the right to refuse the building permit stage and I'd be right back. So I can't, I can't make that change on the floor like that. So in an abundance of caution, you'd like to keep it in. That is correct, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, Jordan, anyone else? Yeah, so uh, I, I mean, thank you. Uh, I've got, I got a lot of problems with accepting the testimony of an applicant on what's permitted and what's not permitted. And you know, all I see is all these different um, requested variances and they look relatively significant to me. Like I'm, I'm being told that you need a balcony on each uh, floor and then there is uh, one of these variances relates to the fact that there's not supposed to be more than one on each side. So we're putting three on one side, and that's a variance, as I understand it. And then I'm told that it's because it's required, and like either these are required or they're not required. And so the, for the, Larry, the, the variance for the balconies in the rear are there because of the size. As of right, they could have a four meter square balcony. What originally the applicant was proposing was an eight meter square balcony. Right. What the applicant has done on today is reduced that to six. So that is still over the four as of right. So but they still need a variance for that. I, I'm Her talking argument about four. is that uh, you, as of right, she could put a four meter square balcony on both the front and the back. And they've chosen not to put a balcony but on the front. That's, that's not the way I read it. That's not the way I read it. Because I look at, at uh, uh, variance four and it says no more than one on each of the front, rear, and each side of the building. And, so, and then it says, so at the bottom line of variance four, it says a proposed number of platforms on the rear is three. So that's a variance as I understand it. I don't think that you can, I don't think that by her reducing on uh, on five, she's still complying with four. She still needs the variance on four, so she's at getting a number of variances. So if you read number four, it says there may be no more than a total of four platforms and no more than one on each of the front, rear, and each side. So right. you can have four in total, right? But, but she's put the four in the back, Which, if I understand. Can I? In the back, three in the back. Mr. Chair, may, may yes. I uh, Ida, do you want to weigh in? Yes. Yeah, so, so if we pull up the um, planning study initiatives on multiple ho multiplex housing, um, multiplexes may have multiple front entrances. Okay, which we which that's not an issue here. How many balconies decks can I have on a multiplex? Two balconies or decks are permitted per unit, one on the front and one on the rear of the building. So, but here there's three on the rear. 
and that's why you have variance number four. Well, balconies and decks, balconies and decks must be located on the second story or above. And why we are asking for it, multiplexes uh, on a corner lot may also locate balconies on the side facing a street. So um, through you, Mr. Chair, the comment that you made, you are absolutely correct. Why we have this um, bylaw is again because we are ask we are asking for the more for more than four square meters, which I've now reduced it to um, six square meters. So so why do we have we are variance four? We wouldn't have even needed that variance four if it was just that you could do this as of right for through four you, meters on you, five. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, again, through the interpretation of. Uh, the zoning examiner, this is um, a, a conversation that I've had with them. And I, I am not in a position to make that change as we see. And I just read you the excerpt from the official plan amendment zoning bylaw amendment as it relates to the planning study initiatives in relation to multiplexes. Um, you are permitted a balcony at the front and a balcony at the back above the second story, which we are proposing. And what we are proposing um, is larger than what is permitted of the four square meters. If I now were to remove, if I were to have four square meters, and the reason being I'm at, I've brought it down to six square meters, um, is also still to allow for some space if you want to have like a small bistro table um, and and enjoy some some light and air. Uh, okay, so uh, but it is not not big enough to have um, a gathering or a party per se. Okay, then let's talk about um, the variance number eight, where you're proposing the front a lot frontage at seven point six two instead of twelve. Well, why are you doing that? Like, is, can you shed some light on that one, please? Um, through you, Mr. Chair, that is that is the lot size. I've I have not changed that at all. That this lot size is seven point six two, okay. and, and this is an area of twelve meter, twelve meter frontage. It's an RM twelve meter frontage. And as I've mentioned, and as you see from my aerial and um, my building footprint map, you will see that this is a very eclectic area. We have wide lots, um, we have wide and okay. shallow. I understand. Let's talk lots. about uh, variance three for a second. Proposed height of the side exterior main walls, that is uh, 11.53 instead of 8.5. So you're going straight back. You're not sloping them at all. You're saying that that's because of a building code al allowance. Uh, well, can you shed some light on that one, please? Variance three. So, so um, again, with the new multiplex, um, you know, so with this new multiplex um, OPA and zoning bylaw change, um, you can have the building height can be uh, flat roof, um, you, you can have it at the same height from the front to the back. FSI does not even um, come into play because if you notice, we do not even have, they do not even mention FSI because you are permitted. Uh, the reason again why is we are, ha we are proposing a multiplex um, and this allows a full nine foot ceiling um, on the third floor. And again, this is for a flat roof. For a flat roof um, bylaw, it is more to speaks more to overall height than main wall height. So I, I'm still confused. Like it seems to me that three and four really aren't variances, but yet they're listed as variances. So are they variances? <laughs> um, through you, Mr. Chair. With respect, I I would propose that they are not. But at the end of the day, I have to respect what the zoning examiner has stated. And these were um, this is something that 
I cannot make changes to because okay. I have to. Yeah, so I, I'm just going to interrupt, and Larry, uh, what we have before us Please. is what the zoning examiner has provided to the applicant and to us. It, you know, we can't really debate whether it should or shouldn't be. It's what we have in front of us. Okay. What the agent has indicated that there are overriding, and I believe she's correct, there are overriding provisions uh, for multiplexes uh, that speak to this application. Uh, the zoning examiner has included certain variances which may or may not be needed given the new policy, but a, an abundance of caution, the applicant would like to keep them in. So for us, it's just a matter of if, we're con if you're concerned about the height, it's the overall height of 11.53 in this neighborhood. It is a variance that has been suggested by the zoning examiner, so we have to deal with what's in front of us. But you see, I have to approve something. I'd like to see what the, you know, if the zoning examiner has gone too far and asked. Well, anything, again, like to we're, we're not going to, frankly, we're not going to debate that. Yeah. What we have in front of us is what the zoning examiner has given us, and that's what we deal with. So I appreciate your frustration, but that's what we have before. Yeah, but I, I would prefer that the applicant provide to us, like instead of a testimony from the applicant, like I have to take the applicant's word and the applicant isn't here as an expert to us, they're here as an applicant. So if I could see it in writing that the what the applicant is saying, like the applicant is saying number three and number four really uh, really aren't, wouldn't be needed according to the which? The, uh, so my advice would be then you have to make your decision based uh, on yeah. what is in front of you. Okay. So you're either comfortable or uncomfortable okay. with it. Well, I'm uncomfortable. So I'm going to draw that uh, line of questioning to a conclusion. Is there any further questions? Okay. Uh, Simon? Through you, Mr. Chair, I did receive the email from the applicant. It appears there are 19 le uh, form letters of support, and that was dated back in August. In August. So that August. would have been... That should have been accepted. October right. That should have applied to the October submission. What the applicant is saying is those are still relevant for this application. According to the applicant. Correct. Okay. But they have not been updated. I understand. Thank you very much. Okay. We're in committee. Comments? Do I stay? Do I go? Uh, yes, you can stay until we make a decision. You can stay as long as you like. Okay. I'm going to stay. Okay. Uh... Yeah, we in committee. Any thoughts or comments? Jordan? Uh, I'll kick it off. Uh, I'm hung up on variance number three. Um, I, have to, oh. I have to go off of what uh, is in front of us. Um, I've, I've worked actually a little bit with these exemptions. When you, when you apply for a multiplex, you're given a little bit of leeway in terms of building depth and height. Mm -hmm. Um, I frankly, I'm a little, I'm left a little confused. The, the applicant, from what I understand, said that she doesn't need the variance, but she wants to leave it in for caution. Um, I frankly, I, I question whether or not, whether the applicant needs this variance. I, I frankly, I think they do. Generally, when you're allowed to build up to 12 meters, there's some additional provisions in there that state basically between the 9.5 and the 12, there's got to be some sort of setbacks or angular planes. I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the bylaw in that respect, and I understand it may be different in this case, but I, I have to deal with kind of what's in front of me, and I'm, I'm not convinced that it is an as of right to build 12 meters in all directions without any, any mitigating factors. Um, I, I, I would also say that I, you know, I, I generally very supportive, actually. It's a fourplex. I think this is a, we, we want to be able to accommodate these in neighborhood in our neighborhoods, but, you know, for example, um, you know, on that front main wall, if there was just a, an angular plane, like for example, a 60 degree angular plane in a dormer, it would take away zero living space from the units. Um, a lot of that space actually, if you look on the front elevation, is a one and a half story space in a stairwell. And it's all being pushed up on the front main wall of a house. Um, in terms of precedent, I just don't see a 12 meter front main wall in either in the immediate or the broader context. So I, I just, I can't support uh, variance number three. Okay. Anyone else? Larry? Well, I think, I think you know what I, what my position is on it because I, I, I just basically said the same thing. Okay. I'm also uncomfortable with 
four. Medi? Uh, yeah, same for me. I, I, I like this application. It's a fourplex. It's a, it's a, I know this neighborhood. It's the right place for intensification. But I, I can support uh, variance number three. And also, I would appreciate if there were some effort to you know, reduce that uh, impact. But I don't see that in the design. And also, variance number five, I think it could be easily removed which is there, and it's the neighbor's concern. So in general, I can't support this application, unfortunately. Okay, Carol? Um, I really like that it's a fourplex too, and I, I agree with Jordan, though, and Mehdi on um, uh, item number three, that I would like to see a little more um, consideration for reducing the side and exterior main walls. Um, I am happy with uh, item five and six uh, to reduce to six meters, six square meters. I think that's a significant reduction and it does provide outside space for these units and uh, it's not going to be a gathering space. It's going to be more a little refuge for people who are going to be living in these units. So that's where I stand. Okay. Well, then let's do a different Sorry? Uh, okay. I'm, uh, I, I, I have mixed views on this one. Uh, I think we all share the uh, city's policy objectives of trying to introduce additional density in existing neighborhoods, and we are all supportive of uh, fourplex. Um, and I take the agent's view that uh, this is an eclectic neighborhood. If you do go up and down the streets, there are uh, all sorts and manners. I would say it's characterized in part mostly by uh, two-story walk-ups, uh, three plexes with one in the basement. Um, and it is also characterized by uh, single-story bungalows. And while I love the fact that we have four plexes uh, coming forward, um, not every site is a viable site for a fourplex. And uh, this one in the mid-block as it is with uh, mostly surrounding one story, one and a half story homes, I think presents uh, an undue overlook burden and visual burden uh, on the existing neighbors. So, and we haven't heard from everyone, but I think we uh, have heard sufficiently from some that uh, this would represent uh, an undue impact. So, uh, I agree with my colleagues on this one. I'll look for a motion. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll bring a motion to uh, refuse the application. I, I will, if I may, Mr. Chair, just uh, note I, I do think with some revisions and a, a second go that this, this may be a viable application, but I really need some consideration of the massing on that, that yep. above nine and a half meters. Yep. Okay. Motion to refuse by Mr. Allison, seconded by second. Mr. Swartz. All in favor? Application is refused. Okay. We move on to item number 24. Thank you very much. Thank you. I guess they'll, they'll go back and come back again. Right? Uh, that will be uh, their option if they choose. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Item number 24, 56 Hawkesbury Drive. This is an application to construct a new detached uh, dwelling with rear platform and lower walkout. <laughs> Committee has before it a copy of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevation, stormwater management report from uh, Alan Masaji, um, uh, decision matrix from urban forestry, community planning staff report dated February 27th, and ravine and natural feature protection staff report dated February 29th. We have letter uh, in opposition from 48 Hawkesbury and from Councillor Carroll. Do we have the agent with us? Yes, Mr. Chair. My name. We'd have your uh, name and address, please. Hello? Hi. 
Hamid? Hello? Through you, Mr. Chair, we've unmuted the owner of the property as well. Uh, you are unmuted, sir. From our. Hello. Hello. Hi there. If you could give us your name and address, please. My first name is Arash Misali, 56 Hawksbury Drive. So sorry, it's a little bit noisy here. I just had a newborn like two hours ago. I mean, I'm a funny <laughs> professional. Well, congratulations. Well, like less than two hours, like 40, like, yeah, about an hour and a half ago. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, Thank that you. is dedication. I'll tell you that. Well, Thank sorry, you. we didn't catch, we didn't, so we didn't catch your name. Um, Alan Misali, 56 Hawksbury Drive. You get it? Hamid? Or Arash? Arash Misali? I'm Arash. And also okay. Hamid. Arash. Yes, and Hamid is my architect. I'm not sure if he's here or not. Okay, fair enough. Um, we do have uh, some folks who uh, want to speak to this item, so we'll need a presentation from you. Okay. Hamid, are you here? Um, apparently, we, we have him online and unmuted. Uh, he should be able to hear us. Is your architect speaking on your behalf? Yes. Uh, well, why don't we, we'll stand this one down. Uh, you might be able to get five or ten minutes of shut-eye, uh, and we will... Okay, help. let me just call him. Maybe there's something wrong with his computer. We'll stand this down, and we'll come back to you in about 10 or 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. We will go to item number 25. 537 Coldstream Ave. This is an application to construct a front porch extension, two-story rear addition, and third floor addition. Panel members have a copy of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, seven photos of the subject property, and additional support materials dated March the 4th. We have three form letters in support from 535, 538, 539 Coldstream. Do we have the agent? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Can you give us your name and address, please? Yeah, it's Sarah Ifra. I'm agent for the applicant, and it's 2675A, like Apple, Bathurst Street, M6B0A7. Uh, okay. Can you um, can you give us a short presentation, please? Sure. If you could pull up the supporting material, that would be great. Um, we have six variances before us. This house is an existing house, and we've added... Um, a couple one-story additions, a small one to the front, um, and a one-story at the back. So if you scroll down, yeah, exactly. Um, and then you can see in the green at the rear there, we filled in a two-story portion. And the blue to the right-hand side is the second floor on an existing one-floor portion. And then that red beyond is the, is the addition beyond. Um, and then we've got a new terrace. So essentially, the um, variance number one refers to the first um, porch as you as you approach the house. We've changed that slightly. We've gone from um, the existing 1.5 meters to 2.8. It's in the same spot. It doesn't have any impact on anyone. But it was a bit of a slim porch originally. And just to address the street, we popped it out a little bit. Um, in terms of the second variance, we're talking about building height there. There, we're asking for 10.55. That's really to the slope to drain portion. That's not to the actual visible height of the roof. The visible height is 10.22. And if you look at the elevation where I compare it with next door, because I actually did the next door neighbor's house, so I had that drawing, you can kind of see they're really you know, in line with each other. They're about a foot difference. But again, we've got to remember that 537 is an existing home. We've added the, the third floor on it. So we're 
you know, a tiny bit off there with the height, but in general, they look, you know, from the street level, they would look um, almost identical. I did do a house at 561 Glen Grove, the exact same thing where we had a an existing two story with below grade garage and the height that we got there at the committee of adjustment was 11.8. So sometimes it depends on the established grade and things like that. But looking at these two houses together, I don't think there's immense impact on um, the street or the neighboring properties. Um, the permitted number of stories is two. We've got our third that we've added on here. But again, we've tried to contain it within a roof. Um, not really, you know, we're not building something that looks extremely different than any two-story house in the neighborhood. In terms of variance number four, we're talking about lot coverage. So we did have a portion of our rear deck that is included in that coverage because we do have some space below that. Um, next door, our our coverage is actually 51.8. 41.58%, um, and that's not including any terrace. And you can see if we look back at the site plan, that, and this will address the, the next variance as well, that house is actually a little bit longer than ours. So again, we're kind of, we're stuck with a couple of things. One, our house is you know just under 40 with our additions on it, but we've had to include part of our rear deck, which would have been there. Had there been no space beneath it, it wouldn't have been in the coverage, but um, we put an exercise room underneath it there, so that's included. But again, I think the number of being at 40% in this neighborhood um, is again within reason and within what's been developed in the neighborhood. Um, so again, so uh, variance number five and variance number six are, you know, in a similar vein where we're talking about the overall length of the house. If you look at the overall two-story portion, or, or three-story because it's within the room, it's 17.35 meters. Our extra length comes from two things. One, our little, you know, bay window bump out at the front, which brings architectural interest to the, to the home. And then our one-story portion and our deck had to be, or our terrace had to be included in our length. So you can see all the way there to the right, that's where that number 21.83 is is there. That's for the ninth, for variance number six of our 19. And the 22.6 is again from the front wall of the house to the rear of that deck. So in terms of impact, I would venture to say with respect that the actual you know, impact of the house is really, you know, just over just over 17 meters. We're at about 18 meters for the two stories. And then we've got the existing one story to the front and our proposed one story to the back. And those two portions, I don't believe in, in my opinion, that those have um, extreme impact. So again, those numbers, they, they may seem high, although when you compare it to the neighbor, we're still shorter than, than the neighbor at 535. Um, I don't believe there's negative impact on those neighbors because we've kept them to the one story. We have not built above them um, with any of our uh, house. So I've got 26 sec seconds left if anyone has any questions. Thank you very much. Panel, any questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Okay, let's take this into committee. Any comments? Gordon? Uh Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think this is a very good application. Um, I like, uh, and also I, I might add a very good presentation. I think it was very helpful where the agent showed the adjacency uh, and the elevation. I know oftentimes we get that information in site plan, but it's, uh, it's, it's difficult to kind of understand what's going on in terms of elevation. So I think the applicant for that. Um, I think it's relatively straightforward. I don't think any of the impacts are, are major in this case. Um, and I frankly, I mean, it's taking an, a, an existing building, which is, is actually, it probably wasn't built as, as, isn't as old as some of the other existing buildings that we're dealing with, but I think it's actually it, sort of building into the third story, I think is a, is a good use of intensification without creating uh, much impact on uh, the neighborhood. So uh, for that reason, I'm, I'm happy to move a uh, motion to approve the application uh, with uh, no conditions. Okay. Mr. Allison is moved approval. I have a seconder. Ready? I second that. Uh, all in favor? You have your approval, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Can uh, do we have the architect for 24 yet?
he's on. Can we give him a? Because he had, did he give a number to call? Can we call him directly? He's currently unmuted. I can okay. I can call him, but he should be able to speak now. Um, Mr. Masaji. That's the owner. Oh, bigger pardon. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Hamid. Can we try and give him a call? I am trying. Hello. 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 I I I'm the my mic is on you, so I can talk. Can I'm sort of hearing something somewhere. Hello. Okay, does he have a phone number to give him a call? Okay. All right, we will get back to you as soon as we can connect uh, properly with you. So we will move on to number 26, 223 Holmes Avenue which is an application to construct a new two-story detached dwelling. The uh, committee has before a copy of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, two photos of the subject property, support materials and comparables from the agent, and a memo from Urban Forestry. Do we have the agent on the line? Yes, sir. Ali Shakiri, 326 Shepherd Avenue East. Good afternoon. Okay. Um, do we need, I was going to say, uh, panel, do we need a presentation on this one? We're okay. All right. Sir, we've read all the information you've submitted. We're comfortable with what we've seen. We don't need a presentation. Is there anything you'd like to share with us before we take it into committee for a decision? Nothing to add, sir. Thank you. Okay, panel, we're in committee. Uh, can I get a motion? Nettie? Yes, Mr. Chair, I think uh, I'm comfortable to make a motion to approve this application. I don't see any condition from the staff, so with no condition. Okay. Uh, motion to approve. Do I have a seconder? Oh, uh, Ms. Martin, all in favor? You have your approval, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. We will move on to item number 27. 176 Panna Hill Road. This is an application to construct an east side addition and an extension to the existing garage. Panel has before it a copy of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, five photos of the subject property, and a tree protection bylaw declaration. No correspondence. Um, can I get the agent, please? <coughs> uh, yes, good afternoon. Uh Mr. Chair and Committee, can everybody hear me okay? We can. Can you give us your name and address? Perfect, please? thank you. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, my name is, uh, yeah, bless you. Uh, yeah, my, my name is Julius Horvath, <laughs> J-U-L-I-U-S, uh, Horvath, H-O-R-V-A-T-H. Uh, and I'm the architect representing the client. My address is 25 Bonnie Meadows Drive in Aurora. Uh, just hang on a sec. Do we have another registered speaker on this item? <coughs> Is this person in opposition? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Sir, you're... Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. We do have someone standing by to speak to this item. So we'll need a short presentation, please. Sure, okay. Uh, so basically, this, uh, this project... Uh, is a, a second story uh, extension on top of the main ground floor story of the of the single family house. Uh, and it is also a, a small side extension to an existing uh, garage. And we're also removing and replacing a, a flat roof, which is currently exists over an existing porch. Uh, the, the roof itself will be pretty much the same footprint as uh, as what currently uh, exists uh, so again the uh, what we're looking for according to the zoning 
uh, app, the the uh, the ZAP, the zoning review. Uh, we're seeking a minor variance to extend the garage uh, about uh, looks like 0 0.749 uh, meters to the east. Uh, the reason being is the garage is not wide enough uh, to have a proper to make it a proper two car garage. So as a, instead of the 1.8 meter setback, uh, we're proposing the face of the garage be extended such that it is 1.11 uh, meters from the east uh, lot line. Um, on the west side, there's a uh, 1.24 meter setback of the porch, but again, that is an existing uh, porch. Uh, it's just the roof is gonna be new uh, or replacing an existing roof, but it's not going to be any bigger than what is currently there. So I'm not quite sure why that particular uh, uh, item is on the on the uh, the zoning review there, uh, but uh, anyway, the garage is the main the main item. And again, the second story uh, just to, uh, uh, is a going to be um, uh, built to the face of the existing rear side and and front uh, uh, front wall. Uh, but that's uh, yeah, that's basically the gist of the project. Great, thank you very much, panel. Any questions? Okay. Do we have the speaker? Uh, Mr. Yo. Mr. Yo. We have unmuted the speaker. Uh, yes, please. May I speak to the committee member, please? Yes, please. Uh, can you give us your name and address, please? My address is 178 Banner Hill to the website. And my name is Mr. Yu. The full name is Kum Chai Yu. Okay, you have five minutes, sir. Yes, dear. Uh, just uh, just question to the, I look at it on a plan on a piece seven. It's not very clear what is the height is going to be proposed addition. That is the first thing. Secondly is to the extend the, the garage to the west, uh, to the east side. And my question is how many feet by law allowed to be between the two houses. And I believe I look at it on a page seven of the, the plan there. I see that this mentioned on a third floor. So it does mean they build another floor on a on a, our area is only we have in our area is a bungalow side split, best split there. I don't see anywhere in the mine street to be on the third floor. So that's all uh, my uh, question to you, but it's not clear. Somebody can uh, tell me what is a proposed addition uh, height to the, the, the third floor. Okay, so- Thank uh, you very much. Thank you very much. We, we can ask the agent that, but you need to know that the applicant has not requested a variance for height. So uh, the height that this structure will be is allowed um, as of right. So, but we will bring the agent back to speak to your issue with respect to the side yard setback. We have- Thank you. Uh, agent back. Yes, thank you very much. If you can just speak to, I think the- Hello? Yeah, so if he, I know that the uh, your neighbor asked how high your uh, structure will be, and you're not seeking a variance for that. But if you know that, you can let him know. Correct. But he also wanted to know the distance between your house and your proposal and his house. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, so the, the height it's uh, from the finished grade. Uh, we're coming in at uh, yeah seven point nine nine eight. Meters, so I guess you could pretty much call it eight meters to the to the, the peak of the roof for the uh, for that uh, for that addition. 
Um, as far as the distance between uh, the house and his house, I, and I, my understanding is the house that you're, you're to the east, to the um, to the west of us there. Um, yeah, I don't I don't have the distance actually shown um, to that to that particular a house to the uh, to the west um, you know, because really the what we are focusing on is the extension of the garage on the other uh, other side but the, what, what I was requested is just to show various dimensions from front lot line to face a house uh, etc but I yeah uh, unfortunately I don't have it, it's it's pretty much the same as uh, as the um, you know as our our west side I think we've got one point Two, four meters. Um, it's probably close to that visually, but apology. I don't. I don't have it on the drawing. Are you? You're not seeking a variance for that side, are you? Is it the other side? No, uh, no, not according. Yeah, no. The only thing we were told to get a variance on was was the garage extension, okay. uh, and for some reason they they mentioned something about the porch, but that's an existing porch, and no mention of the second floor. So right. So it's existing condition. Okay. Thank you very much, panel. Any yeah. questions? Okay, thank you, sir. We're going to take this into committee. Panel, anyone have any thoughts or a motion? Mehdi? Yeah, I'd be happy to make a motion. I think the application uh, meets the four tests of the Planning Act, so I'd like to make a motion to approve, and I don't see any condition. Okay, okay. motion to approve, no conditions. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Mr. Swartz, all in favor? You have your approval, sir. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. Thank have you. a good afternoon. Can we go back to and try again? Did we have we got any success? Through you, Mr. Chair, do you have a contact number? If you just give me a second, I'm going to try and reach the applicant directly. Would you like us to wait and deal with this item now? Uh, yep. Just give me a okay. second. That's application number 24, right? We're going yeah. back to 24. Just to be clear, when he it's says he took me, lot. it's not like he paid for me. He just what? steered me in that direction. <coughs> I should have. We enjoyed lunch together. <laughs> I, I, well, I hear that is one of the conventions here. Okay. My name is Hamid. And my address is. Hold on. Give us your name and address. My name is Hamid Rafi Nizar, and my address is 21 Brightway Crescent in this uh, Simon, I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, too much feedback. Why don't we, while we're trying to deal with this technical difficulty, uh, continue on? And we will deal with item number 28, 504 Cranbrook. Uh, this is an application to construct a new three-story detached dwelling. The panel has before it a copy of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, an arborist report from Al Miley Associates, and community planning staff report dated February 21st. We have one letter of opposition from 506 Cranbrook. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Uh, are we at uh, 28? Oh, pardon me. Yes, you have to. You have to Sorry. leave. 
Uh, so Mehdi has declared a conflict and he will be uh, going outside to this item. Okay, do we have uh, the agent for 504 Cranbrook? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, committee. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, could we get your name and address, please? Yes, Jonathan Minskowski, 301 Kewatton Avenue. Great. Uh, we do have someone listed to speak to this item, so if we could have a short presentation, Jonathan, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, a couple of the kind of the highlights. Um, the three-story permission is caused by there is a movie room that is proposed under the garage. So basically, as height is then interpreted, it is taken as the closest portion to grade. Because there is, a un there is an excavated movie room below the basement, that actually means the functional basement is now considered uh, the first floor. So that is why we have the three-story permission. Uh, this is a conventional dwelling integral garage two-story above it, very typical to Cranbrook, uh, very typical to North York, and, and frankly, fairly typical uh, across the city. So in terms of that three-story, that's why that permission is there. Uh, when we look at the side yard setback permission, if we were to go to the site plan, we would see that that reduction of the 0.61 meters is only up until essentially a little bit past the garage itself. So the house actually is wider at the streetscape and narrows to be zoning bylaw compliant towards the rear, which is important because then as Johnson, we get into that Johnson, impact... Johnson, I'm sorry, sorry yes. for interrupting you for a second. Can you just hold on for a second, please? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sorry, Jonathan. Uh, another one of our panel members has had to excuse himself because he may have a potential conflict. So... Um, okay. I'm going to reset the clock for you because we are distracted. Okay. <laughs> and if you wouldn't mind starting again, please. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so quickly to summarize, uh, Mr. Chair and committee, the three-story uh, variance is really because of the excavated theater movie room that is under the garage. When that happens, it means the actual functional basement becomes the first floor because we interpret it as that area that is closest to the established grade. Because we have those kind of one and a half stories below the garage, that is why it is a three-story dwelling as interpreted in the zoning bylaw. Uh, in terms of the side yard setback request, if we go to the site plan, we would see on the site plan itself that the house is wider at the front as it faces uh, Cranbrook, and it becomes zoning bylaw compliant just a little bit after the garage. Uh, the other important factor um, that that leads to is, again, that main wall height as it extends into the rear yard of the adjacent property is zoning bylaw compliant. And again, is only a modest increase of 0.4, uh, 0.5 meters. Uh, in terms of the impact into the adjacent properties, we can see that this is corner, this is really one property in from an intersection, as we see um, to the north, that is a, really on a 45 degree angle. So this isn't a typical block where the adjacent house is a rectangle. The adjacent house to the north is an oddly shaped lot. What that leads to is a different relationship in terms of the rear yards and side yards and how those functional uh, places are used in that rear yard. Uh, in terms of the impact into 500, again, we're, mom we're very marginally behind um, that rear wall that exists there today. Uh, in terms of the width of the stairs, it's not a true full width. They do get wider um, as they go down. So the massing of the stairs is in 3.1 meters uh, the whole side. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions or address the concerns of the neighbor after we hear them. Great. Thanks, panel. Any questions? Nope. Okay. Can we have the first speaker, please? Mr. Brown. I have two questions. Mr. Brown, you can talk. Okay. Hi, my name is Darren Brown. I'm at 506 Cranbrook. I'm to the uh, immediate west of uh, 504. Um, unfortunately, uh, I haven't heard any of the presentation up until now. Um, I was in, and then I had to log out to come home. And anyway, that's that's my issue. Um, you've got my you've got you've got the, uh, our letter. Uh, we met. Um, 
we met with the with the owner uh, builder uh, Cam. He came by on uh, on Monday, showed us his you know his plans and drawings. Went into a little bit more detail about his you know what he what he hopes to do. I'm sure it's going to be beautiful. Um, you know, I guess I guess, and I, I I don't have my letter in front of me, but uh, the you know I, I guess the the only uh, item that that I guess still resonates a little bit with us is the you know the backyard uh, extension. Um, um, otherwise, you know, the, I'm not concerned about the height. I understand what three stories is. Um, you know, in 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 the back, uh, heading toward heading north, uh, Cam is. Uh, you know, taking just just a, a you know I don't know a few more feet than than his immediate neighbor to the east. You know that, that with the with the added kind of coverage and and uh, sun sunlight deprivation issues. Um, you know that that's that's our only uh, item at this stage, um, and I'll leave that to to you guys to to sort out if I can listen that would be great so you're so just to summarize your your main concern is in the rear how how far back the this house is extending into the rear yard right right okay so just the other, so, the other concerns I'm not I'm not concerned with yeah so just so you know so uh, the applicant's not seeking a length or depth variance it's just I guess from your perspective, it's more about the coverage. Well, I, well, I guess it's yeah. Well, I guess coverage means 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 length and depth. Does I mean I, right? I mean it's 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 the it's the it's the northward extension. Okay, I think we understand. We'll bring the agent back and have him address your concerns. Thank you very much. Okay, am, am I able to stay on in here? Yes, sure. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mr. Benzowski. Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I, I think you kind of, um, the comment you made there was correct. Where that coverage is appropriated on the land um, is really insignificant when it comes to where that rear wall is. The dwelling could be narrower. It, it could be um, have cutouts that would affect the coverage. But that rear wall in terms of the front uh, setback, building length, rear yard setback is all as per the zoning bylaw. So the, the siting of the house um, except for the 0.6 meter side yard setback at the front, again, which was not, which is on the opposite side of number 506, is really as per the zoning bylaw. So that rear wall is permitted where it is. Now, again, I will say we are requesting an increase in coverage, but again, that coverage could be through making the, the house shallower, narrower, um, uh, not as wide. Uh, really, where it's appropriated, um, it it's, can be anywhere on that land. So, in terms of the actual. Um, idea of also a loss of sunlight they're actually located to the east sorry they're located to the west of the subject property um in terms of that loss of sunlight that might be between 8 30 and kind of 9 a.m in the morning after that it wouldn't have anything it, it would actually cast itself to the south right okay thank you very much panel any questions of the agent i I just have a question regarding the uh, rear north elevation. It looks like you've got two two balcony areas here. So is one considered first floor and one's considered second floor? And if the second floor is con if the second one is the higher one is considered second floor, what is the size of that balcony? Because it stretches. The drawing shows it stretching right across. Um, which looks like it would be significantly over four square meters, but maybe you can comment on that. Yeah, on the main, sorry, on the main floor, um, there is no request in the R district. This is the most permissive of all of them. Uh, so there is no request for that balcony off of the, I guess you would, would actually call it the second floor in this instance because of the three story request. But in terms of the second floor, sorry, but then if we look at the third floor, there is no balcony proposed off of that. There's only one balcony, uh, within the whole, within the whole proposal, which would be the, the functional main floor. Okay. 
And it looks like from the drawings you're proposing privacy screening, right? Yes, sorry, Mr. Chair. Yes, I, I did mean to mention that we had put in privacy screening already. Okay, great. And we are also are okay with the planning recommendations. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, we're taking this into committee. Anyone have any thoughts or comments on this application? Carol? Okay, would you like to move a motion? Oh, you gotta put your mic on. Yes, I will make a motion to approve this uh, application. Uh, can you refresh me? Are there any conditions? There is. Planning condition uh, is recommending we tie it to the elevations. Okay, so um, subject to planning conditions to tie the t staff planning report. I presume it's in that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion to approve subject to planning conditions to tie it to elevations. Do I have a seconder? I'm happy to second it. I might just add uh, just a little bit of planning uh, justification. Just a little bit of planning rationale. Um, I do recognize that this is a bit of a unique in terms of context. I know I, I, I thank the applicant for pointing out that the lot directly adjacent, part of the reason that they have such a reduced setback is because of the nature of the block form. Um, so, I mean, that said, I was a little bit concerned with respect to some of the adjacencies, uh, particularly with the fact that the neighbor at the rear has a very limited rear yard setback just by nature of the block pattern. But given that there's no depth variance uh, and that they have been uh, mindful of their side yard setbacks, um, the only variance I really like stood out was lot coverage, which I, I think the applicants demonstrated a sensibility to the kind of deployment of the form over the lot. So I, I think it, for that reason, I think it meets the, the purpose and uh, intent of um, our official plan and zoning bylaw. Uh, so I'll, I will uh, I will second that. Those are uh, good comments. Thank you. Motion. Jordan. And I would just make the point also that this is an area which is seems to be characterized by similar sized dwellings and similar size coverage and uh, a lot of uh, new uh, renovations and infill. That's great. Okay. So motion to approve by Ms. Martin, seconded by Mr. Allison. All in favor? You have your approval, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. How are we doing with uh, 24? Have we been able to reach them? So I know we've got a couple of neighbors who are standing by to speak to this item and we apologize for the delay, we are struggling to fix our technical problems with the applicant. That's Hamid, right? Hamid? Three, Mr. Chair, we'll try again. Hamid is unmuted. Okay, uh, Mr. Masaji. Why don't we move on to the next one? We'll keep trying. So again, our apologies to those people standing by wanting to speak to this item. We're still having technical difficulties. We were working hard to fix those. So uh, we will move on to item number 29, 32 Sultana. This is an application to construct a new two-story detached dwelling with rear deck and walkout. Panel has before it a copy of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, presentation materials from the agent, an arborist report from Redbud Arborist, and a community planning staff report dated February 23rd. We have one form letter in support from 31 Sultana. Do we have the agent? Yes, good afternoon. It's uh, Glenn Rubinoff from Rubinoff Design Group. Great, thank you very much. Um, Folks, do we need a presentation on this one? Mr. Rubinoff, we've read all the information. We're pretty comfortable with the material. Uh, we're going to take it into committee, but before we do, is there anything you'd like to um, speak to the committee about? Uh, no, I think it's a pretty straightforward application. City planning has outlined that it fits 
uh, in accordance with um, its uh, the neighborhood context that the proposed bill fits in with what other developments are like in the area. Um, and um, unless there's any questions, I, I'll leave it to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Panel, any questions? Seeing none, we're going to go into committee. Uh, anyone have any comments or a motion on this one? Seems fairly straightforward. Anyone? I'm happy to bring a motion to approve the application uh, subject to the recommendations noted in the community planning staff report. Um, I think it's a very uh, sensible application that takes into consideration its context. I'll particularly note that the applicant has made a considerable, uh, um, taken in, into consideration the, the tree, which kind of falls between the properties, and you'll notice that they've They've um, yes. they've adjusted the building to accommodate that tree, and I I, I certainly acknowledge and respect that. Um, and with respect to you know the overall, um, I think the variances overall collectively uh, don't contribute to uh, any any negative or adverse impact. I think it's a it's a very uh, well thought out and well planned uh, application. Uh, would you be open to a friendly amendment? I see that there is a uh, second story balcony. And oh, I think there you. are some concerns about overlook adjacent neighbors. Uh, would you be open to putting screening on the sides? Thank you for uh, pointing that out. I think that may be helpful. Um, just to clarify, um, do we need it on both sides or just let's see? Yes. If I, if I could interject, it's only on one side of the building. It's on very one. close, only on the, uh, the balcony is very That's far, right. only on one side of the building. Yeah. And which side is that, sir? Uh, it's on the, uh, just give me a second here. The, the, uh, Sorry, Mr. Chair, do you want to come out of committee side. for a second? Let's oh, I beg your pardon. Yeah, you're in, you're in committee at this moment. Uh, thank you very Mr. much. Mr. Allison was in the middle of making a motion. Sorry, sir, we were in committee, and I neglected to come out of committee to have a discussion with you, so we have officially come out of committee for a discussion with you. So if you, uh, what side is that uh, with the screening be on? Uh, that would be on the west side. Thank you very much. Okay, we're back in committee. Thank you, yes. Uh, so uh, to Mr. Rubinoff's uh, point uh, on the, the west side, the screening. Okay. Um, and that pertains to the uh, ground floor deck. Okay, uh, second floor deck. Second floor, yeah, do we have, a, is it one of those <laughs> where they consider the? Yeah, if you look at the, side of the elevation, the side elevation, it's, uh, it's a second floor. Okay, thank, thank you for that. See it? I see it, but I also see the ground. Are we pertaining to the ground? Is the ground is relatively low? Yeah, I'm not. I don't have concern. So okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the west, uh, the west side of the the second okay. story deck. Motion to approve by Mr. Allison with the planning conditions and uh, screening on the upper balcony. I, I might add it to a height of 1.5 meters if that's that's uh, acceptable to you. Uh, seconder. I second that. Uh, Medi. All in favor. You have your approval, sir. Thank you very much. I think we'll continue on. Thank you. We'll continue on to item number 30, 348 Horsham Avenue. This is an application to construct a new two-story detached dwelling. Uh, committee only has a copy of the survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We do have one letter in opposition from 346 Horsham. So do we have the agent online for this one? Hello. 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 Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, if you could give us your name and address, please. Sure. My name is Morteza Dawari. My address is 3080 Young Street, Suite 6060, representing the residents of 3048 Horsham Avenue. Okay. We have a couple of speakers listed to speak today, so if you could give us a short presentation, that would be great. Yeah, definitely. Uh, 
We have submitted the proposal for construction of a new two-street building. This project introduced three, uh, four minor variances, which we believe are minor in nature. We are seeking the committee's approval for these variances as outlined uh, in the uh, public notice. Uh, we have engaged in discussion with the neighbor at 346 Horsham Avenue to address their concern regarding the proposed 1.68 meter side yard setbacks on their side. I mean, east side. Initially, they submitted a letter of objection to the proposal. However, after constructive discussion, we agreed to increase the site yard setbacks to 1.8 meters to comply with the zoning bylaw and address their concerns. Consequently, they have submitted a, a conditional letter of support to the committee confirming that the owner has agreed to maintain the required minimum east wall setback at 1.8 meter. Okay, hang uh, on a second. Hang on a second. I'm just going to stop you there. Uh, I don't have any record of that correspondence. Does do anyone? Do we have a record of that piece of correspondence that you just referred to from 346? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, as we checked the uh, the status of our application, we noticed that uh, a letter of support has been submitted this morning. This morning, so we we wouldn't yes. we wouldn't have that uh, available. That's that's past the the submission deadline. So, okay, please continue. Uh, sure. Um, pardon me. Uh, um, so uh, we are pleased with the resol uh, with the resolution. We resolved the uh, concern regarding the east site ER setback. We are now seeking the committee's approval for the minor variances regarding the west site ER um, adjacent to the neighbor at 350 Horsham. And um, other items like the maximum lot coverage, which is proposed 31.17% of the lot area. And um, the other um, minor variance regarding the exterior esters providing the pedestrian access to a building. Uh, <clears throat> Through the design process, we have strived to ensure our proposal complies with bylaw requirements to the great to the greatest extent possible, aiming to avoid uh, proposing a structure that does not harmonize with the neighborhood context. Thank you for your patience and um, for considering my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. I would so be more than happy to answer any question you might have. So you've come to an arrangement with your neighbor. Are you changing any of your variances? Or are you keeping the variances as submitted? Uh, yes, <clears throat> according to a conversation with the neighbor at. Uh, you said 346. Neighbor at 346. Yes, we are going to eliminate uh, item uh, nine, number one regarding the requirements side are set back on the east side. Okay, so you're removing variance number one. Are you changing yes. any of the other variances? We would like to keep them. You'd like to keep them. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, panel, any questions? Okay, we have speakers listed. Someone from Australia? Is there anyone on the line? Yeah, no, they're not there. Okay. <laughs> They'd be sleeping right about now, I would think. Uh, and uh, Mr. Shang? Okay. All right, Mr. Shang. Yeah, my name is Shang Shang. Shang, uh, sorry. 94 Avenue. Okay, you have okay. five minutes, okay. sir. Okay, no problem. So I just mentioned about the, uh, I'm here just to make sure the 346 Hongsan Avenue to make sure they remove the uh, like uh, east the side east the side back viruses. Okay. So because the uh, yeah the person from the Australia is the owner of uh, four six six I think uh, four six eight uh, Hansom. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So what we've heard from the applicant is that they have in fact removed variance number one, which is the east yard setback. So it sounds like he's done what you have agreed to. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. All right, uh, panel, we'll take this into committee. Uh, do, does anyone have any thoughts or comments? Larry, you've been very quiet lately. No, I, I don't have any okay. problem with it. I'm willing to 
I'm Would you like to move a motion? Move a motion to approve it subject to the uh, staff report. Um, no, there's no staff no report staff on this report? one. Okay. So but the, this is an amended application, yeah, removing amendment, variance number one. Remove variance number which okay. one? Number one. All right. Uh, motion by Mr. Schwartz to approve uh, the amended application. Do I have a seconder? Okay, Ms. Martin. All in favor? You have your approval, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will go on to item 31 and then hopefully get back to 24. Item 31 is 132 Homewood, uh, which is an application to construct a new three-story detached dwelling. Panel has a copy of a survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, cover letter from the owner agent, revised plans dated February 26, five photos of the subject property, community planning staff report dated February 26, tree protection bylaw de uh, declaration. There is no uh, letters in support or opposition. So. Can we have the agent, please? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and member of committee. My name is Amir Khazaneh, and I'm representing the owner of 132 Homewood Avenue. Great, thank you. My address is so 36 Glenshock. You have submitted a revised, some revised material. Can Are there any changes to the variances in the public notice? Yes, about the number three, we have uh, uh, agreed with the planning staff to reduce the wall height from eight uh, eight point eleven centimeter to seven point ninety six. Okay. Any and any... Uh, are there any more changes? Three. No, I just wants to. Uh, provide some information. Uh, I liked aspect of the property. Why technically it's a two-story house, various number po five proposed three stories. The basement level is considered the first floor due to portion of the midpoint of the basement level being slightly higher than the established grade during to grading of the lot. As a result, the main floor is considered the proposed main floor take is being considered second story platform as well. Number item number five and item number six, despite being connected to the main floor, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Okay, panel, any questions? No questions. Okay, let's. Uh... Let's take this into committee. Uh, comments? Motion? Well, um, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm willing to move it, but I just want to make sure I understand what the, uh, what the, I mean, the staff report recommended the uh, variance number three be amended. Is that what the applicant has done? If they, if they Is that the height variance? Yeah. Yes, it has been amended. Yes. Uh, okay. And it's a, yeah, it's the, so I think he, indicated that he was making the change that was negotiated with community planning okay. exactly Maybe we have reduced the height to 796 uh, centimeter I'm sorry, and sir. sorry i'm sorry sir i'm sorry we're in committee any other comments you're good so if uh, you wanted to move a motion mr swartz I, that would be I great have a comment oh uh, i think um I just need clarification on item six. There's a uh, platform of 25, second story platform of 25 square meters, it looks like, from four square meters. Yes, it looks like it's a main floor platform. Would you like to come out of committee main and speak to ask floor. a question? Would you like to come out of committee, Carol, to ask the applicant about that? I just want to find out if anybody knows, is it second story? Is it a second story or a main floor? Oh, it's, you, I can't see it. I can speak to it. It's, it's, it's one of those where it's, it's attached to the ground level. Well, what, what we would consider the ground level. But I think because of the basement in this instance, it's being considered a second story platform. So to, to that point, I was actually 
also looking at that, just given the height off the ground, just to ensuring that there's uh, not any insufficient overlook or privacy uh, right. impacts. So, okay, should be okay then. No, so so do you would you like to recommend privacy screening, or are you comfortable with as is? Making that determination. <laughs> is anybody making a motion? No one. No, we haven't made a motion yet. Personally, I think it's fine. Yeah. Doesn't seem to be an issue. Yeah, I think you're fine. It's not the the depth is not exceeding too far, like beyond the adjacent property. I don't think there's any significant okay. overlook. So I will look to a member for a motion on this one then. I'd be happy to make a motion. Mehdi? Um, so uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve this application with the amendment of variance number three. Uh, the proposed main wall height uh, from 8.11 to 7.96, and also the other condition uh, noted on the planning staff report. Uh, I don't see any other condition to impose. Um, there, I think they wanted to tie, planning wanted to tie it to elevations. That is on the planning staff, right? I thought I, I have it written down. Yeah. Can someone double check? Yeah, I, I, I saw it too. Yeah, is it tied to plans? I think it was tied to elevation. Yeah, yes, it was. Yep, yeah. east elevation. So Correct. planning is recommending tying the approval to the east elevation. Yeah, to include okay. that as well, yeah. All right, we have a motion to approve subject to planning condition and change to variance number three. Uh, we have a seconder. Oh, Ms. Martin, all in favor? You have your approval, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, how are we? Thank doing? you so much. You're welcome. How are we doing with uh, uh, number 24? I've asked the applicant, so I've asked the architect to call in, but we don't see him yet, but he is on the WebEx through a computer, so we can try unmuting him that way. We'll try it again. Uh, okay. Uh, Hello? How long do we wait? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Who is this? This is Hamid Rafinejad, the architect. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Finally. Okay. Did, I think I read so, this. Uh, in, yeah, my, hang on a second, sir. I think I ran this. I read this into sure. the record already. So I think we're ready to proceed. So if you, sir, can give us your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Hamid Rafinejad, and my address is 21 Brightway Crescent, Richmond Hill. Thank you very much. So we have some folks who are registered to speak to this item. So we'll need a presentation no longer than five minutes, please. Sure. Uh, I, I think everything is uh, set in the uh, application. It's to construct a new single family house for a family of uh, like some kids, parents, nannies, and uh, they need more spaces uh, rather than just a family of uh, two or three. And uh, yeah, the uh, notice that I have here, the uh, notice one, actually we are going to remove it from the list and notice eight, that's gonna be removed as well. Hold it, so let's, and, let's uh, hold, hold it, sir, sir, hold it a sec. <clears throat> let's be <coughs> excuse me let's be clear you're proposing to remove variance number one yes num num number one which is actually the setback front setback yes okay so that's which actually it's just 12 centimeters we will actually move the building back to uh, where it is uh, should be okay so like you're 12 removing centimeters uh, to, to the uh, bylaw requirement okay uh, so you don't need the front and number setback. eight. <coughs> uh, no, no, no. Actually, the, the setback is okay. <coughs> we will actually uh, 
take it as the bylaw uh, um, suggests. And number eight, which is the area of the uh, balconies or platforms, <coughs> which is just 26 uh, square centimeters, which actually will uh, reduce it to four. And uh, we'll uh, meet the bylaw, so that will be eliminated as well. Okay, so you're removing variance number one and variance number eight. Are all the others remaining yes. as is? Yes. And uh, for the, uh, I mean, the second one, that actually we have a report like the sewer water management, a company that actually has done this is uh, a company that actually is working on these uh, projects. And uh, a lot of the different projects, even in North York, they have done maybe uh, 20, 25. And this is uh, just to make it clear that actually we are not going to take care of the uh, water collected on the driveways, that it will be retained in the building as well, I mean, detained in the building property as well. So it goes to a dry cistern and actually evaporates and or gradually absorbed by the soil. So we are not going to have any burden to the uh, stormwater management of the city. So that that's another thing that actually we can uh, discuss. And then the, the uh, I think number three and seven, we have a staff report to support it. Mm -hmm. And for the the, uh, the two items, like five and six, that uh, I noticed that we have objections on that, uh, is like the, the, the larger the family, I mean, the, the larger the building. So, but uh, we can actually take one of these, uh, I mean, we can suggest to have one of them as like six feet, and the other one, uh, we, uh, we, we want to keep it at uh, four feet. So uh, the one actually that actually is between 56 and 54, we will have it as six, uh, which is the uh, bylaw suggestion. And between, between 56 and 58, we uh, decide to keep it as four feet. And I think that that's it, that's it. And the uh, building height, an explanation, which uh, I actually wait for the uh, speakers, and then we can uh, discuss on that if uh, they are convinced or not. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I just want to be clear. So you have a reverse slope driveway, um, and that's yes. why you need variance number two. Uh, and did you say yes. your your proposal is to have the uh, surface water drain into a cistern? Yes. And uh, are there some Actually, pumps? it's collected to the sump pumps. You have some pumps? Some pits, and by, through the sump pits, it is pumped to a cistern, and actually it gets absorbed by the soil, and part of it will be uh, evaporated. Evaporated, okay. So, and you... In the back, yeah. You've... Okay. Uh, have you had discussions with the city planning about that, and they have no concerns? Uh, the company, the consulting company that we work with, uh, they have done it, and I guess if I mean uh, they have any concerns, the planning the, the department, we will take care of that, and uh, we will have their like uh, approval before starting the building. Okay. We have done it in the 37 uh, Cliffcrest in the Scarborough, and it, it will be occupied in like a week, and same same uh, reverse uh, ramp and. Same uh, calculations, everything uh, looks fine, and the Toronto water was happy. Everybody was happy with that. So we, we do the same process here in this property as well. Uh, in the driveway, the reverse slope driveway, what are the materials that you're using for that? Any type of material. We can have like concrete or, I mean, because it is a sloped, we prefer to have something solid, not to run off. But, uh, and also, at the, at the end of the driveway, at the door, we'll have like a trench uh, drain, which actually collects the water and goes to the uh, sump pits. And then actually we have two sump pits. And then through those two sump pits and uh, sump pumps, it will be pumped to the backyard. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm a little surprised you didn't use something that would be a little bit more permeable to reduce the stress 
on your cistern and sump pump. That, 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 yeah, that, that's an option. But uh, again, because uh, this slope is not uh, very like um, shallow, I, I'm concerned that actually uh, we might not actually be able to keep it steady. I mean, uh, those permeables uh, work very well on the flat or very shallow slopes. But if it is required to do so, we will find a way to do it. Okay, thank you very much. Panel, any questions of the agent? Okay. We have uh, the first speaker, please. Thank you. Hello? For allowing me to participate. Yeah, hi, it's uh, Ken Hurston speaking. Hi, Ken. Can you give us your address, please? 54 Hawkesbury Drive. Okay, you have five minutes, sir. Thank you for allowing me to participate in these proceedings today. I am Ken Herson and speaking on behalf of Carmen Herson, who is the owner of 54 Hawkesbury Drive, which is adjacent to the subject site on the west side. We are strongly opposed to all of the proposed bylaw variances and agree with the concerns highlighted in Councillor Shelley Carroll's February 28th letter of objection as well as the letter submitted by the residents of 48 Hawkesbury Drive and respectfully request that all of the existing bylaws be upheld since the proposed variances far exceed the norm in the neighborhood. We are strongly opposed to variance number three where the permitted maximum height of all side exterior main walls facing a side lot line is 7.5 meters and the proposed height is 10.3 meters, which will exceed the allowable maximum by 2.8 meters. A 2.8 meter increase of the allowable height is very, very significant and is a 37% increase over the allowable maximum. The staff report comments that the 2.8 meter variance is a roof architectural feature we disagree strongly with that statement, as from the perspective of the neighboring property, the feature will have the same negative impact and characteristics as if it was a sheer wall. We are also strongly opposed to the variance on the west side yard setback in point six, where the bylaw requires a minimum side yard setback of 1.8 meters. But the proposal is to reduce that to 1.2 meters, which will be a 33% decrease of the minimum required setback. Therefore, the structure of the building will be significantly closer to the lot line, thereby reducing sunlight, privacy, views, spacing, and openness. When 66 Hawkesbury Drive, just up the street from the subject site was redeveloped, this committee refused a reduction of the side yard setbacks from 1.8 meters to a proposed 1.6 meters, stating in its notice of decision that in the opinion of the committee, the variance was not minor, the general purpose and intent of the official plan and zoning bylaws were not maintained, and the variance was not considered desirable for the appropriate development of the land. It should be highlighted that these comments were made for a variance of less than what is currently being proposed. In summary, we echo all of the concerns that Councillor Shelley Carroll and the residents of 48 Hawkesbury Drive highlighted in their letters of objection. The proposed variances are more significant than any that have been previously approved along Hawkesbury Drive. We are of the view that the subject site could be successfully redeveloped in a manner that adheres to the existing bylaws. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, sir. Panel, any questions of the speaker? Nope, thank you very much, sir. Uh, can we have the next speaker, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Can you hear me? Uh, barely, if you could speak up, if you can. Right, I will do my best, thank you. Hopefully that's better. Hopefully that's better. That, that is better, sir. Thank you very much. Could we have your name and address, please? My name is Brian Edmonds. I live at 48 Hawkesbury Drive. 
I understand the applicant to have uh, eliminated variances one, eight, and six uh, when he talked earlier about the setback to the west side yard. But I'll leave that to the committee to clarify. So I speak today uh, for myself and my wife. We've been at 48 since 1991. Uh, my wife, Helen, has filed a written submission that's in your file. Uh, also in your file are submissions from Councillor Kara and from Carmen Herson, who lives at 54, and you've just heard from her uh, representative. I support and adopt three submissions, and like them, I object to the application and ask that you reject it in its entirety. Given the five-minute limit, I'll focus my oral comments on just a few of the variances sought. First, number three. Uh, the application seeks, as, as uh, Mr. Hurston pointed out, an increase from 7.5 to 10.3 or 37.3%. As Councillor Carroll reports, the proposed height would far exceed the norm in the neighbourhood. Such sidewalls would loom over the neighbouring properties, especially if the side setbacks are reduced. It is noteworthy that the applicants have not filed a shadow study. In your files, a staff report on the requested sidewall variances. Importantly, staff recommends that if you approve sidewall variances, you impose a condition, which I will come back to. But first, to dig a bit deeper, the staff report states in essence that you should not worry about the sought after wall height increase because only part of the sidewalls will be increased to 10.3 meters. Staff call that part an architectural feature as if to minimize its impact. First, I submit if it's only an architectural feature, it should be easy for the applicants to modify the feature in order to meet the legal requirement of 7.5. Secondly, if one actually looks at the file drawings of the sidewalls, you can calculate that in fact, over 47% of the sidewalls, the outermost two parts will be 10.3 meters in height. Height. So my first submission is reject the requested sidewall variances. However, if you are inclined to grant them, please impose conditions on them as suggested in the staff report, but include not just the rear elevation attached to that report, but also the two side elevations, which in fact illustrate sidewalls in question. Lastly, I'd like to comment on the requested variance seeking permission for a partially sunken driveway. The subject property is located partway down a slope. Top of the slope is about at our house, number 48. Slope runs downhill eastward to number 70. As Council of Carroll notes, this area has a history of flooding issues. The applicants have filed a stormwater management report in an attempt to address the problems presented by the reverse slope driveway. That report bears careful study. It highlights several problems the author faced. First, the water level during the 100 year storm event cannot be accurately calculated since a hydrological model, a model of the pertaining sub watershed cannot be precisely determined. And also no geotechnical investigation report is available. And so the author had to presume that the groundwater level is below the planned foundation. The offer sets out uh, as, of, as an optimum plan, as his plan A, if you will, and I quote, it's our opinion that a service connection is necessary for safely discharging the runoff from this property and avoiding the risk of overflow to neighboring property due to potential land alteration and close vicinity of buildings. However, the author notes that such a service connection is not granted as per municipal code and sewer use bylaw, and therefore he proposes a plan B, as I call it, which is a very complex system of mechanically engineered systems uh, involving sumps and trenches and pipes and all kinds of backup and a very specific system of swales that, and a switch that will allow the owner to direct water forward to the street or backward towards the ravine. And he will have to monitor the rain in order to manipulate this switch at appropriate times. In conclusion, the eight variances will result in a building that's physically and visually massive and not in keeping with the neighborhood. The variances do not comply with the four tests. There's nothing abnormal about this lot. 
or the suggested use that make these variants necessary. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Any questions, panel? Okay, thank you very much. Can we get the agent back, please? Uh, uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, sir, you've heard uh, some mm -hmm. concerns raised by your neighbors. I wonder if you could address them as best you can. Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to go back to the reverse ramp because we've discussed it uh, a little bit more than the other variances. And uh, despite the Mr. Uh, I forgot the, his name, the last uh, speaker, the uh, water shall not be discharge to the city or to the back ribbon. The cistern system works properly and Toronto Water actually is happy with it. 100 uh, rate of the rains of the, uh, is actually given to us by Toronto Water. We don't um, invent it. I mean, we don't assume that this is like that. They have the statistics of the rain, like 25 years, 50 years, 100 years, and we use those numbers for each area. Actually, we use my consultant, actually, the uh, company that actually uh, does the calculation and the design. And if they actually have a look at the design of the uh, ramp, actually, we go up from the curb and then go down to the garage. So that actually bumped over there is to keep the water from ramp to the street and from the street to the ramp. That's how the city actually will accept this, the Toronto water accept this. And there's, I mean, there's no complication in it. Two sump pumps, maximum. One sump pump, two sump pumps, depending on the amount of water, will work. And uh, I think it's really clear. And for the sidewalls, as uh, he mentioned, uh, yes, I mean, we, um, I mean, the setbacks, let's go back to the setbacks. Uh, the setbacks between 56 and uh, 54. The owner and I decided to actually keep the uh, suggested uh, setback by law, which is uh, six feet, 1.8 meters. And to the other side, to the uh, east side of it, uh, we will keep that uh, four feet. The height, as he mentioned, I mean, yes, uh, they speak in a way that actually the whole thing is like one, uh, 10 meters, which is not. And uh, I think uh, I, for uh, clearance or, uh, or clarification, I asked the uh, staff to clarify why she's just concerned about this, uh, like walls and the others, uh, not uh, that uh, important. She sent me an email. I hope that it is, uh, and I think it's part of the uh, documents, uh, as it's supporting documents, something that she says, we are not concerned about the rest because they all pass four tests for the uh, variances. So it means that the, they, they have passed. So it's serious stuff, I think, is more eligible to figure out which one is like passing the four tests and which one is not. And uh, I think that that would be clear from that. The rest, I think, uh, and also like 48, 10 buildings away from this uh, property, and they are concerned. I respectfully, uh, the councillor uh, has actually uh, asked to uh, completely refuse this application. When we say completely, it should be completely. Uh, they don't even like the talk which one can be refused. The co completely refused, which is the. Uh, doesn't look logical to us. But anyways, uh, again, I mean, for to keep the 54 uh, happy, because they, they are neighbors, they, they want to uh, live for a long time, uh, we do that as well. And, but and the rest, uh, we stand up. Okay, thank you very much. Can uh, I, one of the um, residents or neighbors uh, suggested that he thought he heard that you are changing variance number six, which is the west side setback. Are you making any changes to variance number six? Yeah, yes. I mean, I, the, if, before I mean, the speakers, when I started the, explaining the project, I suggested actually to 
uh, increase it to what the bylaw suggests, which is uh, 1.8 meters. So you're from eliminating the, uh, so, from the web path. So you're eliminating variance number, number six. Yes. Okay, so you have no side yard setback um, variance for the west side. Are you? What about number five and the east side? Uh, we will keep that because uh, the adjacent property is actually uh, going to be constructed, and uh, they were in the committee of adjustment a couple of months ago. And uh, they already have uh, 1.8 meters, and 1.2 meters actually will add up to like 1.5, 1.5, uh, sort of like if we assume that it is what we want to divide it equally. But the distance will becomes like 10 feet. Okay, so you are eliminating now variance one, variance yes. six, and yes. variance eight. Okay. And also, the various three and seven is explained in the CD staff, which uh, again, I mean, the, the portions of the wall that actually are they are just going to cover the slope roof on the, the the tiny slope roof on the front of the building and the back of the building. The rest is a I mean, the whole building is using a slope pitch roof uh, and just to keep it a little bit different from whatever uh, we see in the city, not different. Okay. Part of the difference that actually, many architects design it like that. So this is not something that's actually uh, that, not uh, passing the four like test. Okay. But again, I think we, I think we understand. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay. Any further questions of this agent panel? Okay. We go into committee. Oh, you do have. Yeah, I, I still have some questions because I, I'm trying to understand the elevations on the elevation provided. Uh, the so north, let's see, there's uh, uh, south front elevation. So maybe I'm, I'm not a total expert on this, but I see these dotted lines. I'm trying to understand the uh, variance three, okay? So the neighbors are complaining. They're saying that this is not minor. The variance is... The standard would be 7.5 meters, and you're going to 10.30 meters. Are you going? Are, are you doing that along the whole sidewall, or like what are these dotted lines? Does this mean that you that the front is? No, no. Okay, so explain it to me a little uh, better, please. Sorry, Jeff. Yeah, uh, if we can have the side elevations, it's more clear than the uh, like front or rear elevation. Can we have them on the display? It, it, it's, I looked at the side. It's still not clear to me. Like yeah, here. Here. This, this is the side elevation. Yeah, mm -hmm. So I still got a problem. Just the front I'm and the rear. Is, so when you have those triangles with the, the dotted line, does that mean that that's at sort of like a 45-degree angle if you're facing it from the front? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. This is just to cover that, that uh, pitch roof. I mean, we are capping the pitch roof at the front and the back. From either side, the whole of the front will be sloped, the back will be sloped, the sides will be sloped. And if we check the uh, elevation of these uh, lines, 7.5 meters is the start of the roof. Portions of the roof actually is sort of ca capping those, like, uh, instead of sloping them inward, okay. we just get it all the way up and we just cover it. Because I'm trying to understand why, like, I mean, I can see it's a, it, it's a big difference, but it does look like an architectural design feature to me because it's really not going to be that visible from the street. You didn't sort of show, like, somebody walking by uh, at street level is probably not going to notice that, uh, that because it's stepped back from the street. Is that, am I correct on this? No, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, I mean, uh, uh, somebody actually who's just walking by, they might feel that actually is too tall. But if they are curious and have a look at this, they will find out that actually the uh, building is a sloped roof building. Okay. Because okay. Well, I, don't, like I don't have front, any more front front questions. I think I understand it then. Okay. I'll wait for my. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you very much, yeah, sir. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions? No. Okay, we're good, so we'll take this into committee.
I'll look for comments, thoughts. Maybe? I want to make a minor comment. I think uh, it would be really helpful if we have like a presentation or a diagram showing this height variance. I understand it because I'm architect, but I think it's not easy for you know people who are not uh, you know familiar with drawings to understand. So if this is a this is a place that we need like uh, uh, a simplified diagram showing uh, about this wall height. Uh, but I don't have a um, concern about that. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I mean, maybe that's, that's what I was after, because I'm not an architect, so I'm trying to figure it out. Like, if I were one of the residents, I would have been looking at this and saying, well, geez, you know, we've gone from uh, 7.5 to 10. That seems like a big deal. But when I look at it now, it doesn't really seem like a big deal. I mean, the staff said it was an architectural feature. I'm inclined to agree with the staff that it is an architectural feature, but I mean, I defer to the architects on the panel who, who know this much better than I do. Uh, I'll just weigh in because this is not uh, that uncommon in these kinds of structures. It, 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 you know, when they do architects, it's a bit of a flare and flourish in terms of how the, the look uh, does. And in this case, I think the applicant said it hides a little bit of what's behind. And I, I guess that's a, a feature, but um, it would be helpful. I think one of the opposers mentioned it would have been helpful to maybe do a, 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 sta a shade study. This would have been helpful to the neighbors to maybe allay some of the concerns because of the nature of the roof line. Um, okay, any further questions? Comments? Okay, I'll look for a motion. Oh, Jordan, did you? Up through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, just one comment. I had a little bit concern with respect to the side guard setbacks, uh, just because I'm, I'm just looking in the sort of prevailing form in the street, and there is a pretty it's pretty evident that there's considerable setback beyond 1.2 meters for most of the properties. Um, and also, just given the fact that the applicant is taking a little bit of liberty with respect to the massing height, there's, you know, in terms of mitigating. So I just, I want to make sure we're not, uh, you know, I, I, I do appreciate that they uh, uh, offered to remove one of the side yard setback variances. I, I think I, what I heard was that the adjacent property, the reason that you didn't is because they recently had their own development application and that it, the cumulative setback between the two buildings would be three meters, uh, 1.8 plus 1.2, which I would be satisfied with um, because I think ultimately that's, that's the impact. You've got to look at the cumulative, right? And I think, I think good planning takes into account context. You're not just saying, well, it's 1.8 per meter on each side. Let's just do one, two on each side and cross our fingers. But just kind of being aware that say, hey, we, we can push a little bit more this way, but let's you know ease up on one side. So I think that's that kind of satisfied that concern. Generally, in terms of the the massing, and you know, to my colleague's point about the architectural feature, it is it is pretty mitigated. Um, so I, I I would be inclined to I put a motion to support the uh, application. Um, I noticed uh, as well, uh, just pulling up my file, no, uh, leave. as amended, thank you. And uh, actually, if perhaps my colleagues might be able to help out, uh, just pulling up my file here. Three, six my notes. and eight are removed. Yes. Uh, or, sorry, one six, uh, one, six and eight. Yeah, as amended uh, with one, six, and eight removed. And uh, I don't, um, nothing from forestry, uh, but there is a community. Tied elevation. Yeah, to tie so the forestry elevation. Forestry number one. Oh, there is. Forestry number one. Thank you for catching that. Okay, let's try this again. So yes, uh, uh, including forestry number one, um, and as well, uh, the uh, to tie the the recommendation in the community planning report to tie to the uh, elevation uh, drawing. Sorry, Simon. I see the ravine report, but oh, I I, I missed that as well. Yes, I do. I do note that it says no conditions, though. Okay. Hawksbury, it's uh, number one. Do you got it, George? Oh, thank you. Yes, that was an oversight. 
Yeah, that's helpful. Um, yes, we should we should include that as well. Have, does staff have all that? Uh, before we go to second, Jordan, I, I just I'll put this out. And maybe uh, uh, see, see what you guys think. I reverse slope driveways are are things that I think the city generally is trying to dissuade. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that uh, that you know planning staff have not commented on this one, and I suspect Simon, uh, does that happen at the building permit stage in terms of uh, reverse slope and drainage and all that? Does that get addressed at that stage in terms of uh, approving the engineering of it? They look at it. And if, I don't know. Uh, but I am, uh, I've seen many others where uh, we have refused them. Um, I'm not suggesting we refuse them in this case, but um, I would suggest that by making the driveway out of uh, permeable pavers, yeah. that you would reduce the amount of water that gets, actually gets discharged into the cistern and get pumped out and that more will permeate through the ground. So if you guys think that's a good idea, I think that might, I'd, I'd suggest- It's an excellent, recommend excellent recommendation, yeah. And I, I, I should have, I, when you, when it, my ears perked up when you, uh, when you mentioned it. Uh, and that will also take some strain off of their sumps, yeah. which I think will be of interest because that water is ultimately going into their house and then has to get out of their house. So um, yes, well, the inclusion of uh, permeable pavers is a condition of the, uh, to address the uh, slope condition. Okay, we have a, a motion to approve with a series of conditions. Uh, do I have a seconder? Mr. Swartz? I'm willing to second it. So I was the one that had these questions because I feel like the residents, when I look at this, it looked pretty big. And I'm pretty familiar with this neighborhood as well. And I can see why they might have some concern because this is kind of big. But big is not necessarily bad. It's showing that somebody has a lot of confidence. They're putting a lot of... Uh, investment into the neighborhood. And I think it, it's overall, like one of our criteria, uh, it, I think it's for the betterment of the neighborhood. So I could support this. Great. Seconded by Mr. Swartz. All in favor? You have your approval, sir. Thank you with those conditions. Uh, the amended application. And uh, we are, as a committee, adjourned at 635. Thank you all. We need a motion Thank to... Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I have, I'm omnipotent with respect to uh, calling a closed.